welcome to the Kelby Screaming Deals best day of the year until Christmas, right? He sounds so enthusiastic. It's, yes. Hey, yes. we were screaming right before we went on the air because Moments. it's Screaming Deals. It's mostly Dave. Yeah. I'd like to introduce my friends, Mr. Scott Kelby. Hi, Larry. Hi, Scott Kelby. Hi, Dave. Hi Larry Becker. Dave Cross. Hello, Larry. Hi, Dave Cross. And Scott. And okay, that, I'm done Hi, with Dave. my part. See you guys. <laughs> Scott, what is this all about? Tell the world what this is all about. They never told us. Okay, <laughs> so here's what it is. You guys have heard of Amazon Prime Day, right? It's a very famous day where like once a year they do all this stuff for their Prime members. Well, we wanted to rip them off. <clears throat> I'm sorry, we were inspired by Amazon Prime Day, and so today is Kelby One Day. And what we've done is we've gathered together all these things to be to do today that are a lot of fun, which is why Dave's here. We'll have some other instructors here. I think Dave... Uh, Dave uh, Black, Black is Dave here. Black is Dave here. Black is here, like famous sports photographer. And I always think of Dave Black as the father of light painting. Mm -hmm. I think he was kind of the guy that got light painting on the scene, even though it is not sports. He has this other side of him. So uh, anyway, we have that. I'm going to be doing a live shoot today based on a request from one of our members. So uh, we're bringing in a live model, which is so much better than a dead model. <laughs> We'll be doing that shoot today. Um, we've got instructors that are Skyping in from all over the world, and we're just going to have, uh, and we're going to have screaming deals. So a lot of our partners, uh, we ask them, we need a deal that's like unusually good, like a kind of a cyber week deal. You know how like in November we do those? Yeah. Like, we kind of said, we want those deals, but now. So we're going to do that. We have our best price of the year on Kelby One Pro memberships today. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff. It's just going to be a really fun day. We're glad you're here. And uh, we've got demos, we've got stuff, we've got Larry, we've got Dave, we've got Dave and Larry. <laughs> so that's what it is, kind of in a nutshell. Yeah, so one of the things about the deals is each of these deals is going to be limited. So the way that, uh, that happens around Cyber Monday, around the, the big deals around Christmas time. And so with those limited deals, there's going to be like passwords and stuff. And guess where those passwords are going to be? Where, where Larry? <laughs> They're going to be only on the Kelby One site. Yeah, it's true. Ooh, they well, went one up on Larry. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that was actually back. really exciting. That was well uh, done. Okay, I need a I need a one up again. So anyway, <laughs> while we're doing this deal, <laughs> while we're doing this deal, um, and and we have this stuff over on the Kelby One website. If you're not a Kelby One member, you're still going to get lots of information about all the stuff over at Kelby One and lots of great training. This whole day is not just about deal after deal after deal. Oh yeah, that's part of it. But there's also going to be a whole lot of really cool instructional training. In fact, Dave Cross is going to be doing a, a 15 minute segment yes. coming up here what? shortly. Yeah. Well, that's a long time to give Dave. Yeah, it's going to be pretty spectacular. Can you do it in 15 minutes? I can do it in 14 and a half minutes. <laughs> Dang. No, we're, we're, we're probably going to be running over. Uh, but then we also have um, a lot of live demos of some of the things that will be part of the, uh, part of the giveaways, too. So, and you, you are so important to this event. You and your uh, communication with us. And so we're going to be reading what you guys are putting in the chats. Okay. And Do you see how serious he gets when they go one up on him, though? <laughs> right? He's it's like, like hey, smiling what, what, and laughing. What, can you slowly, like, push in on him when he does that it, so it's, it's like it's, on television? You it's know? actually really intimidating when people <laughs> come to me for this kind of information. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be a long day, so, you know, because it's already starting off where, you know. This anyway. Is, this is going in my demo reel. This should go. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a comment from Kevin here. He says, I love it when I get a notification that you are now live. It makes my day. Well, thank you, Kevin. We're glad to have you here watching us today. Kevin's live. Kevin is live. Kevin's Hopefully. live. <laughs> Fully live. I'm sorry. It looks like I'm working over here. I'm doing some social media stuff. I just went on this, the Twitter and the face page, the Twitter. and I'm putting things up there just to let people know, you know, more about this day. So you can watch Scott live tweet. <laughs> That's got to be awesome. Also, if you are watching and you have friends that you know should be watching this, you should do that. You should, yeah, tell them about it. Share, like, well, share. Well, you comment. know what, though? For, for, those, for those of you who aren't familiar with what we do at Cyber, so we go out to our partners that we work with all year long, and we tell them, look, we need like really special deals, not like, oh, here's 10% off. Like we need like serious deals, and they'll do them for just a very short time for us. 
but it's it's a big thing every year, and and yeah. they'll they usually will say, okay, we'll sell 50 units, or because they won't sell so many units that they'll go out of business, but they give us such a good deal, <laughs> and so that's what we're going to have a lot of today as well. Is we're going to have some of those cool deals this afternoon. Are we allowed to tease some of our partners' deals coming up? Not the actual deal, but like who the partners are. Yes, like, you may tease. Like, okay, so there's like Ed's Garage, and no, I'm <laughs> and the dry totally cleaning <laughs> place down the street, ten percent off. Um, Local so county. we're going to yeah. have we're going to have a screaming deal from, of course, Kelby One. Yes, of course. Of course. But we're also going to have screaming deals from uh, the people at Platypot. We're going to have screaming deals from Westcott. You've heard of them. Let Drobo. Me, yeah, Drobo. Drobo. Yeah. yeah. I just got a new Drobo. Did you really? I did. I went and got the big eight bay one because mm. I had like the five bay and I'm running out of room. I have 20 terabytes, it's just not enough. I have storage envy. <laughs> yeah, if you get the big Drobo, it's got eight bays, and you can put four terabytes in each one of them, you can get to like 30, 32. <laughs> I had to do a little math there. You can get to 32 terabytes. That's a lot of storage. That's a lot of storage. It should uh, last another six months or so. At least. <laughs> I'll start shooting JPEGs so they fit. Yep, and spider holster. And I'm actually going to do the Spider Holster demo. Are you? Yes. I'm impressed. I was the very first reviewer of Spider Holster gear for B&H videos way back in the day. Look at you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hey. a fanboy. Ben says, shh, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's not here. If you were wondering, yeah. not, Ben's not, not here. here. Um, I didn't think Ben was supposed to be here. Hey, we, can we tell, we do have one deal we can tell about. Okay. So Kelby, our Kelby One Pro membership is one ninety nine. It's one ninety nine all year long. It's kind of our, our regular price. The lowest price that we ever do is one forty nine at Cyber, and we're doing it for today. It's one forty nine, which is ridiculously low price. It's as low as it ever gets, really. So one forty nine. I've never seen it lower, ever, 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 ever. Even I have to pay one forty nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just waited, just waited for you guys to jump in. I get mine for free. Juan comps it to me, so it's okay. You you actually pay one forty nine, but then you get back the one forty nine because it's called Kelby. I get a I get a rebate. <laughs> it's a licensing of my name and my and my my figure. I'm here. I know I'm here for eye candy. It's true. If I wasn't beautiful, I wouldn't even be on here. But it's the beauty. Hey, I am wearing my new trick, cheap trick. This is not the original. The original Golden Boy died. Oh. Got a hole in it. I had to go back to the same place and order a new one. I love this shirt. It's like my favorite shirt. You know what I like about this shirt? If I wear this shirt like in an airport, random strangers will stop and go, cheap trick, hey, dude. <laughs> the people will just, I, this and my Van Halen shirt actually are like conversation starters. So if you want random strangers to speak to you <laughs> as you move through your life, cheap trick shirt works like a charm. I'm ready for a cheap trick shirt. I got to do that. We got to get a cheap trick shirt deal. <laughs> they're not very expensive. If you search online, cheap trick shirts are not like seventy dollars. They're like, here, I'll do it for you. <laughs> okay, so um, as we get into the day, we want we do want interaction from you guys. We want to hear what kinds of things, what kinds of questions do you have? Um, if you're not a Kelby One member yet, we happen to each. You're a Kelby One member, aren't you, Dave? Yes, sir. See, so we're all three Kelby One members, and this would be a great time for you to I'm ask sure, us about the Kelby One membership because there are so many things on the Kelby One site. It's more than just awesome training classes. It's uh, a whole lot of stuff. There are deals that are always there. There's a community there where you can interact with each other and you can interact with the instructors and you can ask questions. So let's say you took a class and you had a question about that class, you can ask other people who took that class or you can ask the instructor themselves. And they always reach out to us and so, uh, I don't have any questions after people watch my classes, they, they just get it. But You know why? Most, because you <laughs> nail it, you crush it. No, I actually do get some questions every once in a while and, and I'll get this email alert if I don't happen to be online on the community, people will ask me, what did you mean by this or how did this, this particular thing work. And so there's just tons and tons and tons of great classes besides mine on the Kelby One website. <laughs> and, uh, and you can participate there. One of the things that just frustrates me is when I go to learn something from YouTube. You can learn stuff from YouTube sometimes, but you got to weed through so much garbage. Mm -hmm. Before and you certainly you don't have the stuff. opportunity. I mean, you could try commenting and ask a question on YouTube, but oh, yeah. Good the luck chances with that. of that person ever responding 
Yeah. Uh, where, you know, it's it's you know. funny. I'm do, I'm doing um, I'm doing a, a shoot today based on and and this woman said I can't find this information on YouTube. They don't they mm. don't give the details. They just kind of gloss over it. And so that's I'm doing that for I'm doing a live shoot for for one of our members today. But that was her her thing. Um, hey, uh, Hal just asked a question. It says, is there a schedule for the instructional aspects? Hal, are you inferring that what we're saying here? <laughs> and it's okay, you can be straight with me. Hal, are you inferring that this is not instruction? <laughs> <laughs> Hal just no, doesn't want to miss anything. Okay, else. this is not instruction, but <laughs> instruction's coming. I happen to know that 1138 is my live shoot today. It's true. That's true, 1138, because Larry told me it's on schedule. <laughs> it's on the, he's we got the schedule. holding right yeah, there. So, and and yeah. we know that in, in just a few moments, Dave Cross will be bursting into 14 and a half minutes <laughs> of, of uh, you're, doing photo, you're doing Photoshop. Yes, sir. All right. Photoshop. I love your Photoshop stuff. Thanks. You're, you're doing that in the next three minutes or so, aren't you, Dave? If you say so. So, Hal, <laughs> okay, Hal, I do want to say this, Hal, and I'm, I, I mean this on all sincerity. You need to do more like what Kimberly wrote in the comments. Kimberly wrote simply, Oh my God, I love you guys. So Hal, send us more notes like that <laughs> and, and less more notes about, about actual instruction. I'm just kidding, just totally kidding. You know, what I can let Hal know right this moment is that this is the time when we're starting the Dave Cross instructional segment. Right this so minute. I'm, I'm tossing to my friend Dave Cross. Dave Cross. Ooh, okay. You may begin. <laughs> You're not ready? <laughs> no, I'm ready. Okay. Because I was like, I was like wow. so focused on with the time you told me. I'm like, I've got three more minutes. Three uh, minutes. So I am uh, happy to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is working in a way in Photoshop that's smart, meaning you can have the ability to work more efficiently, but also change your mind and be more flexible and be more creative and things of that nature. So part of that to me is a big part, even if you're unfamiliar with smart objects, smart filters, are definitely the way to go. Anytime you need to apply one or more filters, doing it in a smart filter way kind of makes sense. I'd like to show you a comparison of the difference between the two couple of different ways of doing things. So I'm going to just make a quick selection here. Oh, I heard myself. <laughs> you hurt yourself? <laughs> no, I heard myself. Um, so I'm just going to make a selection here and then inverse it because I want ultimately to have the sky selected. So one way to make multiple adjustments would be with adjustment layer. So for example, if I were to add a curves adjustment layer, but then if I wanna make another adjustment, I need to make another mask, which I could certainly do, command or control click on that mask to make another selection and then add something like maybe hue saturation to adjust things slightly. And let's just do one more for the sake of argument. Let's do Command or Control click once again, and do one more. Let's do a photo filter adjustment layer. So I've done these three adjustments, but now the challenge is if I notice there's something wrong with the mask, because I have three separate masks, I'd have to redo each one in turn. So even though it works, there is a better way. So let's get rid of these adjustment layers. Now my photo is already a smart object because it came from camera raw and you'll see that little symbol on the very corner of it to tell me it's smart and one of the things that isn't obvious at first glance is you go to the filter menu you see all the various filters you can use however there are other things in photoshop that are technically considered a smart filter such as all these adjustments now, i used to tell people don't use these you go use adjustment layers but now they come as smart filters so i can still make whatever adjustment i want but now you'll see in here, it's a smart filter with that mask. So that means that I can go back here and do, what else did I do? A hue saturation, I think I did. So we'll make another change there. And I should add, I'm definitely not trying to make this photo look as good as it should, because that looks bad. But just to show you the idea of what we're doing here. And let's do one more, that photo filter adjustment layer. Oh, let's go a little bluer maybe. So now the difference is, you can see, here are my three adjustments, but it shares the one layer mask. So now if I notice that I, something wasn't right about the mask itself, I only have one mask to adjust as opposed to three separate ones. And it has the added advantage, of course, I can still go back and say, okay, that was a bad adjustment. Let me put this 
back here and maybe move the saturation so I can continue to edit the individual adjustments and the mask. So that's one of those things where it's a smart filter but it's not found under the filter menu. So an interesting way to take advantage of the smart filter uh, nature of Photoshop. So here's another example of something that, that uh, has been around for a little while and it's the ability to take multiple adjustment layers and I've added already several adjustment layers in each case I have like in this case I changed the blend mode to overlay and lowered the opacity and then this one's normal this one also has overlay so I've created this look and I want to be able to use that on other photographs now one way to do it is to export a color lookup table and when you do that it creates a single file that you can then apply to a different photograph. The problem is when you do that you can only adjust it overall. In other words you can just make it less or more intense but you cannot adjust the individual components of it. So one of the ways that we can do it instead is if I show my library panel and let's get our all of our layers here. Drag that into my library. Now I have this element in my library. And if I go to a different photograph, if I just drag this in the way it is, it's just dragging in the exact same photograph. So obviously that doesn't help me because I want the elements inside of it. So there's often a way in Photoshop to trick it to do something different. And very often that involves holding down either the Option key on the Mac or Alt for Windows. And when I do that, when I drag it in, you'll see, as I collapse as you can see, get rid of this, it's got the original adjustments. Obviously, I missed one layer by mistake, but you get the idea here. So now I'm still getting the look that I want, but I can actually continue to edit the individual pieces of it. So sometimes applying the color lookup table is fine because you want the overall look to be the same, but if you ever want to edit the individual elements that make up that look, putting something into the library like this. And you don't need to include, I included the background layer because I want to remind myself what the look actually looked like, but you could also just take just the adjustment layers and as long as you name it appropriately, you'll know you've got the right information there. What is an appropriate name for it? I would call it something like cool adjustment that I made or something like Yes, that, that is the That's right name. Very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing to talk about with the world of smart objects. And I'm a big fan of this technique. Oh, good to know that um, I turned off my notifications. It's still telling me that Apple did something. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. I just turned late, off my Late now. breaking thank news. Breaking um, <laughs> so I've got a logo here and I want to have various looks for it. So I have like a a color version. So all built into this document, I just made different versions of this. And I'm going to go to the layer comps, which is a nice way to build into one document these different looks. So I made these previously, and I'll just show you how I could do the same thing. Let's make one that's like this. And okay, so we're making this another version. So we're going to create a new layer comp and call it black with color center. So now built into this one PSD file are all these different looks. Instead of me having to go back to the layers panel and show and hide and move and delete and everything else, I now just can go through these different layer comps. You'll see each one is a different look. So I save that and now I can close it. And now if we open a document, I want to put, put that logo in here. So I'm going to go place linked and put that logo in. It comes in as a smart object. And because I'm using Photoshop CC 2019, I no longer have to hold down the shift key to constrain proportionally. Although Yay. I, I, Yay. Although High I, five. Although I do probably half the time go, oh, do yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> I do so, it about 25% of the time. I'm getting better. I'm getting better at it. So here's my logo, and you say, oh, oh, well, it brought in whatever the last one I saved, and I want to get a different look. But instead of having to start over again, instead of having to relink or anything else, all I need to do is find my properties panel. And you'll see there, right in the middle of the properties panel, 
it shows me the list of all my layer comps. So without having to start over again, without having to relink or anything else, these comps are built in right inside the smart object. So now at any time, I can just go to this list and see what it looks like with a different look. And of course, you could do this on multiple photographs and easily update it to change whatever particular look you need in this case. So that's just another kind of hidden advantage of smart objects is that if you use layer comps, which by themselves are a really great way to work, the layer comps are built inside the smart object. So on the fly, you can just change to a different look. So one last thing to mention, I said last thing before, but I can't just stop there. I mentioned in this first example about a camera raw smart object. I just want to clarify that I started in camera raw. And one of the things I like to do is make sure that I've created this two way editing street between camera raw and Photoshop. And it's kind of in a weird place because if you went looking for an option or a button called workflow options, it's like, eh, nope. So you have to click this hyperlink looking thing at the bottom to find out that one of the options is open in Photoshop as smart objects. So by doing that, now, if I make a change and click OK, it updates in Photoshop. Anytime I want to access Camera Raw, I just double click on the smart object, can make whatever change I want. When I click OK, it updates. So it just creates this nice ability to have the full access to Camera Raw. Now, if you didn't start with a raw uh, file, if you had a JPEG, you could certainly apply Camera Raw as a filter, which gives you much the same capability. And if you do it smart, as a smart filter, it'd be even better. I am, I am much more of a smart object <laughs> user because of my, uh, my classes that I've watched of yours. My experience watching your classes and taking your classes in, at Photoshop World. You've been to Photoshop World before. Uh, a few times. But every time I think smart <laughs> objects, I, I almost always think Dave Cross in the same thought process. Just yeah. You, 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 you've definitely made a name for yourself as the smart object guy. Well, good. In we, fact, you should be Dave, the smart <laughs> object guy Cross. Mm. I think about that a little bit. And, and honestly, the main reason that I talk about it so much is that I have this worry that when I talk to people and they say, well, I don't really worry too much about non-destructive and working smart because I don't really change my mind that much. And to me, it's so much more than that. It's also efficiency and accuracy and creativity. There's right. other things that smart objects and working smart bring to the table besides just, oh, I changed my mind. Well, and there's, there's so much of the, the layer flattening uh, ideology when it comes to Photoshop. So people people want to work and make their document look simpler. Mm -hmm. And you've just shown us just now and also in your classes that smart objects are, are a better approach to that because it does give you the simplified you know view of your document, but you also have the ability to go back and make those changes. And I've stopped using um, just applying a camera raw filter. I always do camera raw as a smart mm -hmm. object. And uh, so that's why my class at Photoshop World is called Smart Objects Unlimited Undo's question mark. Because in a way, it, it really does feel that way. It's because it feels like you can always go back and keep changing your mind and trying different things. Yeah, I, I don't think that people realize that undo, undo's that last forever are such a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to mention that Dave has a class at Kelby One. I don't know if you can see my computer here. But Dave does have a class. Uh, this one's called Mastering Layers and Advanced Techniques. And within that class, he has many things about smart. Uh, here, I'll go down to the, the actual lessons here. here there. Hey, there's Dave Cross right there. That's Dave right there. But anyway, you can see he's got the basics of smart objects uh, and then uh, ray photos. What's a ray photo or AE photo? Uh, I'm going to think it's raw. I, yeah, I would say so. Raw. No, let's go with Ray. Ray, ray photos. It's, uh, ray, the guy who invented then, camera raw. Raw, Ray. It's Ray, <laughs> isn't it? And then uh, you've got smart object templates, smart object filters, and all. Uh, so, anyway, if you are a Kelby One member, go check out Dave's class uh, on advanced layers techniques. Uh, also, a couple other things. These are really important. If we can see on my screen here, I did find the Cheap Trick shirt. <laughs> it is $22.99 nice. at Rockabilia. So, R O C K rock a like memorabilia, mm. but it's rockabilia, which I do get a number of my shirts there. Even my Van Halen shirt, I think, is from there. Uh, but Van Halen actually sells their own; they have their own store to sell their own stuff as well. But uh, there you go. That's uh, cheap for those of you who want to have a cheap <laughs> shirt. So that way, when I see you in the airport, we can look at each other and just go. <laughs> get, take a wild guess. Where did I see Cheap Trick live? Where you, at Budokan? No. Okay, just that was like you know that's a famous album of theirs live at Budokan. Uh, where did you see them? 
The Lakeland Center. The Lakeland Center. Many, many concerts. <laughs> I grew up in Lakeland. Larry and I grew up, not only we grew up in the same town, we grew up at the, we went to the same high school just uh -huh. a couple of years apart. Larry's a few years older than me, 10 years older than me, probably. <laughs> anyway, we went to the same high school. We know the same people yep. and everything. It's small world. After all. And Dave, you and I almost went to the same high school. Yeah, if I'd lived many, in your town in Canada, we probably would have. miles apart. We probably would have gone to the same school. <laughs> hey, we got lots of comments here real quick. Um, Let's see, Josh Hill says, new pro member here. All right, Josh, welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Josh. Uh, you're getting some love here, Larry. Jim Patterson says, I like the class on the EOS R, the, awesome. the new Canon mirrorless. He said, it got me started fast. That's great to hear, glad to hear that, Hey, Jim. can I mention, uh, can I give myself a plug for the EOS R? Yeah, do it. So um, I, I went to CPS last week and I borrowed a, uh, an EOS R, mirror, they're mirrorless. Because I went, and you can see on my screen, I went, uh, I spent, uh, basically, it was, I saw this online. I went like three days, but there was only two days on that. But I went to aboard the, uh, the USS Harry S. Truman aircraft carrier. And uh, I don't know if you can see my screen or not. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. That's <laughs> no, a cue. You, you will soon. That's a cue. Yeah. I don't know if that's, you know. I can see your screen. It's a cue. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, and I used Adobe Spark. And honestly, I, I, so I, I have a new seminar tour that's kicking off next month. And one of the things I'm showing people, we're actually going to build a Spark page in the class because <coughs> I think this is the best way to show your photographs online, period. And it's super, super easy to use. And uh, you, I tell the story and show pictures from the carrier. And this was, I spent a couple nights on there. And uh, these are some shots. And uh, I also have some videos. And there's my loadout of what I took. There's my EOS R right there. And I watched Larry's class, and I was disappointed. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And I tell the story of flying out to the carrier, because we have to fly out and land on the carrier, which is just terrifying. Uh, anyway, look at the in-seat entertainment there. <laughs> Pretty nice there. And I have some videos and different stuff. This, is, this, is a, uh, this video is when, we're, when you're flying out to the carrier, they tell you, that expect water and oil to leak from the ceiling and expect smoke in the compartment. Nice. And so I, I videoed that and you can hear me like softly uh, sobbing and crying. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you, if you get a chance, if you go to my blog, scottkelby.com, uh, yesterday, so April 15th, tax day, there is a direct link to, you can hear, hear, see the whole story and watch other videos. Oh, can I show you this video? It doesn't need audio, it's just video so we can show it. This is a, the tour of, uh, I had um, officer's quarters, so they gave us like better than enlisted men. But, but I wanna show you my favorite feature of the entire ship, watch. So just take a look here, and I'm, oh, I got to hit play again. So this is my cabin, right? It's, and this is for me and my buddy, there's two of us, bunk beds. But, but look, look, they have storage, and check this out. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, talk about it. So anyway, if you get a chance, go check that out. And there's more exciting stuff like that. Uh, Brigitte, hi, Brigitte, says, um, the best reason to join is you will get so much inspiration from other people, and they will encourage you to push yourself. And Brigitte is probably, I will say, we, well, I know Brigitte. I mean, we haven't met in person yet, but I hope to, she lives in the UK and I hope to meet her later this year. I'm speaking in, in London and I'm gonna take a bunch of my friends out and Brigitte is, and, and her husband are on the list. Uh, but um, is she gets the award for most improved photographer of the fastest time. Her stuff is so good. She, she was like one of the finalists like for our last gallery oh, wow. showing. She's really, really good. Um, Kevin says, I, uh, I am a member and you changed my life with photography. Thanks. Very much, Kevin. That was very kind. Nice guy. Yeah. We're How about OC? OC. OC Carlisle. Better that y'all are live um, <laughs> as opposed to. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, <op> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the alternative is not awesome. Anyway, so we have a lot of fun stuff today. Now, wait, one, wait. Thing, one thing from mm. Dave's segment yeah. is that he's actually got a toolkit that he's giving away for free. You're saying it to me like I've never heard this. <laughs> Don't say it to me, say it to the camera. Camera. Dave has a toolkit. He's giving away for free. <laughs> what? Really, Larry? That's surprising. Well, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I feel bad. Not really. So, Dave Cross, what's your, what's your toolkit? Uh, basically, it's just um, a bunch of tutorials. I want to say there's like five, maybe, averaging about eight to 11 minutes each, and these are from my 
training site, most of my tutorials are based on questions that come in from my members, so that these are just representative, but it shows different techniques in a short little package, so a little bundle of okay. five of them. Okay, and where can they find out more about your stuff? My site is learningphotoshop.cc, and I'd like to say I'm, I got a notification last night, so I can officially say it, I have a brand new Photoshop podcast that now is on all the major what? players, including Apple, called Talking Shop with a little before the S for like. What's the? Shop. It's a. What's before the S? Uh, apostrophe. You got talking left Shop. Hand. Left yeah. hand. Just left hand. Just started. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. So maybe there are some people in this room that could be a guest on that podcast in the not too distant future. You know. Juan, are you available to go on uh, <laughs> Dave's podcast? Because I think he's. It's kind of towards you. All right. So Talking Shop. Yes, With Dave Cross. Yes. The Canadian boss. All, it all almost rhymes. <laughs> I actually, I remember um, years ago when you guys were doing the regular uh, podcast, the audio podcast, before there were video mm -hmm. yeah. podcasts. Yeah, you know what it was called? Photoshop Radio. And Photoshop Radio, <laughs> and I actually sat in on one episode of Photoshop Radio, and that was the, it was the craziest thing because these guys are teaching Photoshop with no visual aids. <laughs> well, they didn't, you didn't have video. But video was so right. hard yeah. and challenging back then that Photoshop, it was hard enough for us to do radio back then. I actually talked about in the sort of pilot episode of my podcast where we were sitting there going, okay, imagine you had a photo of a flower. Now imagine <laughs> you're in the layers now, right. hoping that everyone was on you know, the same was wavelength fun, and though. imagining I, along I, with it us. It was really fun. It was, I enjoyed that. The Photoshop radio was fun. And, and there were, what I'm surprised is there are a lot of photography podcasts mm -hmm. that are audio only. Uh, we do a, our show, The Grid, every Wednesday, and we have an audio only version. And I have a lot of people, like my friend Ed was just telling me the other day um, that he listens in his mm -hmm. car. Like, he listens, and I'm like, is it a little weird when we're doing, like, photo critiques? And we're saying, see how this line is crooked? And you're, like, driving in your car, and he's like, yeah, it's not awesome. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a podcast with Rick Salmon. You do have a uh, uh, one with Rick. I've, I've been a guest on your You have, on indeed. One of our, it was one awful. Of our, for, <laughs> no, one of no our, it's great. One of our very first guests, in fact. We've had more than 100 episodes, and you were wow. in like the first 10. Yeah, and I noticed I haven't been asked back. Asked back. Um, <laughs> hey, I just want to mention we are one hour and four minutes from my live shoot. So we'll be doing a live shoot. I have, uh, we are, my studio is back that way. I'm going to go over that way. Of course, you can't see because they're not, you're not seeing me. You're seeing the, the Bay <laughs> Photo. Oh, Bay Photo. Bay Photo has some killer deals. Hey, so Bay Photo Lab, if you, if you have never used them, uh, they are mightily cool. They are... Um, they're a print lab, and we use them here. So we have, you've probably heard of the gallery at Kelby One. Right. Um, we have a, uh, an entire gallery and their images, and, we're, and everybody raves about their stuff. We use their exposure system. So it's X-P-O-Z-E-R? Yeah, yeah I think it's Exposer. XP. Exposer, and it, it is a, a way to hang your images and hang your stuff. Uh, they're giving you a 25% off your first order. Oh, this is some of the stuff. Now, this, this is, is what the 25% the off is on these. These are metal prints. And, and honestly, there's no way that without being there in person that you get the full effect of how incredibly powerful these images are on this shiny metal and then there's satin metal. These are all metal prints and some have little raised mounts. And um, it, it's, it's like HD quality. It's a different, when you see images on metal, I always tell people, it's the difference between seeing regular TV and HD TV. Yeah. Or you can say HD TV and 4K. Or the difference <laughs> between 4K and 8K. Is it, it is it's just that much better. And it, it, it's interesting when people see metal for the first time. Right. They're just like, wow, this is so cool. What is this? And it's printed on metal. How is that done? We have no idea. But it looks amazing. So Bay Photo is, and if you're not using a lab, if you're like, I don't really have a lab. Bay Photo is awesome. Their prices are great. Their customer service is ridiculous. Their quality is great. We love them. And I've been using Bay Photo a lot this last year. Great, great stuff. And uh, their, their prints are amazing. 25% off your first order, which is kind of cool. That's, I'd, I'd take 25% off of anything. Well, it's just, it's just amazing what, the, what they're able to do. They're at every single photo trade show uh, that I've ever been to. And people are just crowded around the booth looking at all the great prints and the options that they have for printing out materials like this. And, and you see these, these prints on metal, it's just, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, their stuff is ridiculous, it really is. And all the mounting stuff, yesterday I saw my first 
metal image mounted on bamboo. It is literally, they have one, I kid you not, uh, it is mounted on bamboo How and it sounds... How does that even work? I don't know, but it, 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 so it sticks off the wall. Okay. So a picture of metal print and then there's this thick bamboo, it's about that thick, so it it's like stands out. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's just, you turn on the side, it's straight up bamboo. It, it is, I know it sounds crazy, it's really nice. I'm gonna go grab it, it's over there. Hey, what the heck happened to Dave? Don't talk, don't talk about it. Okay. He, he just left, but we're not supposed to notice. Okay, great. No one will know. No. Hey, uh, Brian Rogers, since we were talking about Photoshop, Brian says, I've had some issues with recent versions of Photoshop CC 2019, mainly crashes during saving. Any recommendations for fixing Photoshop issues? Uh, so, Brian, um, if you are a Kelby One Pro member, we have a help desk. It's a Photoshop help desk. You tell them, I got an issue, and they will help you figure it out. Um, it, is, it is not like Adobe Tech Support in that it, they know what they're talking about. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're rare. No. <laughs> Our help desk, they're absolute experts. And if you have a weird problem, they love it. If you call Adobe with a weird problem, they're like, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't and know they, what to do. And they research this stuff, too. Because they live this stuff. When, when, um, when there are questions that come into the help desk that they don't know about a class, I get emails from the help desk all the time. Hey, we've got this member. They've got this question about you said this in the class. And, and they, they'll follow things down for you. If they don't know, they won't just go, uh, no, I don't know. Brian, they, they are the best. And I was making a joke about Adobe Tech Support. But uh, they are the best. They literally are. I mean, when, they, when you go to them with a question, they come up. They will dig and dig and dig until they They don't just go, gosh, I don't know. That sounds weird. They are really psychotic about, about getting your answers. So that's what I recommend is, Brian, go to the help desk. Tell them what your problem is. And uh, it, what's interesting is they get such a volume that they may know exactly what your problem is just from reading it. They may go, oh, it's the, you need to upgrade to the blank blank, or you need to take out this plugin or this extension or whatever. They will, whatever the weird thing is, if they don't already know it, they will find it. They're great. And we get, we, get, we get love letters from people who went to the help desk. They just write us and go, your help desk is amazing. You guys are so great. I think you helped me with my problem. We literally, they get fan mail. You don't have many tech support places that get fan mail, but our, our help desk, which is, it is our form of tech support, which means it works. Uh, is, is, well, I get so, you know what I do? I do, I get a lot of, of, of uh, angry letters about Adobe's tech support. And I can't imagine having to support millions and millions, I mean, how many millions of users there are around the world in all different countries and all different versions, and you have people that have old machines, mm -hmm. outdated versions, like I'm using this, uh, yeah, the Creative Suite 4, you know, things that are just outdated, and Adobe has to handle them all. If you call us, and, or you contact our help desk, and you tell them you have a problem, and you've got, you know, like CS4 or something, they just make fun of you, which is, I think, is the proper way to handle that. It's just me, but I mean, that's... Scott, I really think we ought to do the next deal so that you don't put anybody else down in the uh, yes, help do a, desk. Yes, do a next phase. deal. Hey, at some point, I got I got to shoot now in less than an hour. At some point, I need to you know get my camera out, maybe put a card in, you know. So, okay. At some point, it's going to be one up on Larry for a long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's okay because we have so many cool deals. This like, is free. This is just free. And Unmesh, what a great guy. I love Unmesh. I met him at the last Photoshop World. Yeah. And he's got like millions of followers. Yeah, he's, he's like a YouTube sensation. Yeah, just incredible. And Unmesh is, where, where, what is his home city? He's in Mumbai, India. Mumbai, where India. Where he's based. Uh, but a, a great trainer, a great personality. And he's Handsome had, guy, very handsome. I, I didn't notice. Reminds me of a younger me if I was Indian <laughs> and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> he's really, he's like, I like some people, like I showed him when he, when he first got on the scene in there and, and all the women were like, he's so good looking, you know, and I'm like, he's a guy. I can do the accent, but that's but, it. But oh man, let me tell you, there, there he is. There's Unmesh. Seriously. What a good yeah. looking guy. And incredibly knowledgeable. He comes up with these great tips um, for making your images just look beautiful. Yeah. And it shows up in my uh, Facebook feed. So I find myself following him and. Is he, is he doing a tutorial? Yeah, but it's not, it's not, there's no audio. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. So it's my audio. But his so, voice is great too. I mean, he's, he's got it all going okay, on. He's, so, and he's like 21 years old. I hate him. So, okay, do your Unmesh impersonation because they have no audio on this particular segment. So. Okay, here, here's one. <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> so here's the actions palette. I'm going to click this button down there. And Does this sound like him? 
No. No? Okay. Anyway, but he's a super nice guy. He's teaching at Photoshop World again this year. So if you're going to Photoshop World, which is at the end of next month, well, Mesh will be there. You can meet him in person. And he is very enthusiastic. He's really, uh, he, he's, his personality is infectious. Uh, and uh, he's just an awesome guy. And 21 and so successful. We're, we're really we're proud of him. He's got some great classes on Kelby One, so you can go watch his classes already. Uh, he's got this jaw-dropping, I think it's called jaw-dropping um, deal. That's pretty cool. So anyway, he's got a set of actions you can go download for free as part of your Kelby One membership. So if you're a Kelby One Pro member, go to your Creative Toolkit, and you will see these new actions there just for you direct from Unmish. So thank you very much, Unmish, for sharing those with us. And uh, it's in your toolkit, so go there. If you're not a Kelby One Pro member, we have the best deal of the year today on this one day only, uh, 149 to become a, a Kelby One Pro member. Yeah, there's his class, the jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, eye-popping Photoshop effects. And great stuff. Great guy, great stuff. Look at that, he's got a great headshot. <laughs> what would you expect? I know, no, you would expect nothing less. But he's, he's also, he's a photographer, he's a Photoshop guy, and uh, he's just awesome. I like that he's not cocky. No, he's very sweet. He's a very nice guy. I noticed that about a lot of the Photoshop World instructors. So before I ever even um, was a part of working at Kelby One, I was friends with Scott and went to the first ever Photoshop World. And one of the things that I noticed at the very first Photoshop World ever is that Scott picks the nice people. You, you actually spend time um, vetting, and I know that there are some instructors out there that teach Photoshop and photography and some other things that you might see at events, or maybe you've bought their books, and you get to meet them in person, and they're kind of standoffish and yeah, stuff. But you a, don't see mm -hmm. that at Kelby events, at Photoshop World. Uh, you don't see that from Kelby One instructors. And I've always appreciated, and, and I, I, I hate to actually just be uh, like, really sucking up to you, Scott, but you've done a great job of finding really good, likable instructors that, that connect with the audience that's there. And one of the things that's so cool to me is you see these instructors in the hallway at some trade shows I've been to, at some events in the industry that I've been to. You see somebody in the hallway and they're kind of like ducking away and they don't want to talk to you. And at uh, Kelby events, at Photoshop World, it's the exact opposite. So you see somebody that you've always wanted to meet, you've got their books, you've taken their classes, and you're shy about walking up to them, just walk up to them. They want to talk to you guys. Those are the kinds of people that are teaching at Photoshop World and on Kelby One. Yeah, I, and I, I, it is, so it's my job to hire the instructors for, for Photoshop World and, of course, for Kelby One as well. But uh, yeah, I, I, I want to hire people that are in it for the right reasons, right? They're, they're people that, that they, they, they are drawn to teaching. It's kind of like their calling. It's their thing. And I think that's really important. Um, I will say this, to be quite honest with you. There have been a couple of situations in the past where we hired someone that we thought would be great. And then we realized once they were there that they were either divas or high maintenance or that. I and remember a few. Yeah. And that's the only time that's it. Because Photoshop World is like a family when you're there. Everybody's together. We're all sharing. It's very, it's a very community type of feel. And if you get somebody that's not that doesn't fit into that, I'm really in this for the right reasons. That it's 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 not good. So uh, anyway, the next one's coming up end of, end of May, last day of May, first two days of June in Orlando, Florida, and then we're in we're doing two Photoshop Worlds this year, and we're doing a West Coast one in Las Vegas the end of August. So go to PhotoshopWorld.com for all that info. So PhotoshopWorld.com, there it is, upcoming in Orlando, and uh, the, it's at the Higher Regency in their convention center. The, it, it has been the best venue. We've been doing Photoshop World since 1999. This is our 20th year. And that hide in Orlando so far is the best venue we've ever had. It is, oh, it's awesome. It is, and, and plus, members get 200 bucks off. So you get 100 bucks off for the early bird special. You get 100 bucks off for being a Kelby One member. So the deal to go, I mean, there are, there are many conferences out there that are like two grand and stuff. And yeah. ours is such an incredible value. I, I think it is the best value out there. Um, also, somebody asked a question. ZPT? ZPT? No. Zipped. Somebody asked a question, just random, about the help desk. Do they only help with Photoshop or all the Adobe products? They will help with anything that they can. You can ask about photography questions. You can ask about Photoshop or Lightroom or InDesign or whatever. If they know, if they can find the answer for you, they will. So they're just really helpful about whatever. It's not just, they're not going to go, 
Oh, I'm sorry, you asked a question about Lightroom. I will not answer that. Uh, there is a Lightroom help desk, there's a Photoshop help desk, but these people are so talented, they'll help with anything they can. They are super, super helpful. So there is a gear help desk as well as a Photoshop help desk and a Lightroom help desk. There is a gear help desk. So if you're like, you know, I'm having a problem with this tripod or, you know, which battery grip should I get and all, they'll, they'll help. Yeah. Um, we actually need to stay a little bit more on schedule. I apologize for, <laughs> for her taking us off, going <coughs> off on a tangent, because there is a great deal from our friends at B&H. So they've got this 25% off the Velo LW500, and it is a Wi-Fi controller. So what's so cool about this um, is anytime you can control your camera remotely, it's very helpful. And in fact, that's one of the things that uh, you're looking at right now. So this deal, a very special deal with a hand model, <laughs> this Velo, uh, you can get this for 25% off. Wait, it rotates. And, and, but how do you get this deal, Scott? I don't know, Larry. Okay. I, I was hoping you, you would know. You have to be a Kelby One member. Yes, there you go. That's it. Very cool. How do you become a Kelby One member, Larry? Do you have to know someone and do a secret handshake? Yeah, so Scott's phone number is 813. I don't even know what your phone number is. I Neither just, do I. I just pushed speed dial. Yeah, I just hit favorites. <laughs> so join today so that you can take advantage of stuff like this. And if you're thinking about going to Photoshop World and you're not a Kelby One member, it only makes sense. You join Kelby One, you save all kinds of money going to Photoshop World and get all these extra classes and lots of connections and great deals on this Velo remote trigger. Yeah, you know, you can, this sends it to your iPad or your phone or whatever. So it works with Wi-Fi. Hey, Tyler Hart, uh, Tyler Hart asked a question, and I guess this is a follow-up on that help desk. Can I ask about the platypod? No. No. Yes, of course. Are oh, we doing something on the platypod? We'll show it later. Oh, we're going to show the platypod later, yeah. But I think they were asking about help desk. The, sure, the help, gear desk. help desk. Yeah, you can ask us about the platypod. I, I had a platypod with me aboard the uh, the carrier. I, I carry a platypod everywhere I go, even when I don't have my camera gear. Like if I'm just going to the mall or I'm going to a restaurant, <laughs> if I'm going to Chili's, I take my platypod with me. You just never know. So anyway, yeah, you can ask, ask the help desk. And I'm sure they all have platypods. Everyone has a platypod. Yep. But you can also ask Larry or me. Yeah, or I, answer, I answer platypod questions all the time. Deb says the instructors at Photoshop World are very approachable, and she has three exclamation points, so you know it's got to be true. She said, awesome people. Thank you, Deb. Yeah. They, I, I agree, they are. Two of them have restraining orders against me, though. Well, it's understandable. <laughs> no, we all have that, but I'm closer than you than I, I should be by law. Hey, is there ever going to be somebody in this third seat or, you know? You know, we've, we've, oh, Dave Black. we've got to take a quick break, and I'll answer that question right after we come back. Don't forget the Velo deal, because it's pretty cool. It's right in front of my, my desk there. The biggest photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom conference anywhere, and it's coming this summer to Orlando. It's the world's most famous instructors sharing their latest techniques. It's more than 80 classes on everything from landscape photography to portrait photography, from flash and studio lighting to the business side of things. It's live shoots, hands-on workshops, it's Photoshop classes, Lightroom classes, it's vendors with show specials, it's community, it's inspiration, and it's three days when you learn more than you have in three years. Go to PhotoshopWorld.com right now to get your tickets. Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect, jam-packed with powerful tricks and techniques in this class. We will let Photoshop amaze you. We will learn the fundamental tools in such a way never imagined. In this class, we will not only learn stuff which is mind-blowing, but also at the same time, we will learn stuff which you wished was easier and will make it as simple as ABC. If you ever wanted to learn some tips and tricks that would revolutionize your workflow and that you can actually apply and also how they actually work so that you can apply it in your own way, this class is just the one for you. This is Unmesh Dinda. Join me on my latest class, jaw-dropping tricks and techniques in Photoshop only on lb1.com. talk to so many photographers who are completely freaked out as soon as you mention lighting portraits on location. They hear that and they're like, oh, that, that's too complex and I'm not sure about it and I, I haven't had good results with it. I, I think I know why that you're having a problem with it and I want to solve that problem for you. 
So I did an entire class uh, based on location lighting. And we're gonna go on location, we're shooting indoors, we're shooting outdoors, we're shooting in direct light, we're shooting with window light, we're shooting all these different things. We're mixing the strobe and the ambient. But when you see how easy this is, it's gonna change the way you think about taking lights on location. It is so much easier than you think it is. So should you be using TTL or should you be shooting in manual? Uh, what are your camera settings? What ISO should you be at? What's the right f-stop? If these things are questions that you have, we're gonna clear all of that up in this class. I'm gonna give you the actual settings to use. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this and you're gonna see it all from scratch. We went on location and you're gonna see the whole thing from beginning to end and it's gonna change the way you think about location portraits forever. So come and check out my brand new class on location lighting techniques exclusively at Kelby One. Hey, we're back. We're, we are? And we've got somebody new here. I Let's wasn't stay. even back, I was just here. Wow. I'm just like. So guys, this is such a treat for me because literally I have a few heroes in photography and anybody that ever went and saw my shoot like a pro tour, at the end of my tour, I showed three videos from some people that are he heroes to me in photography. I showed a, a video from Joe McNally and she showed a little clip and then I talked about him and then I showed a, a clip from Moose Peterson and then I showed a clip from our guest today. Uh, Dave Black. So Dave is is my hero on so many levels. He is my all-time favorite sports photographer, which is saying a lot because I follow a lot of sports photographers. But I also credit you with being the father of light painting because I think that you were the person that brought light painting uh, to the forefront and made this thing that was kind of only done by a few people. You helped spread it around the world and your workshops at the ranch. Am I saying that right? Yes. Workshop? Yeah. Your workshop. I used to watch, before I knew you, I used to go and watch your workshop yeah, at, at really? the ranch. Yeah, I used to go. Cool. I want to meet him one day and now we're honored to have you as a Kelby One instructor. In fact, you're here in town doing more classes for us. I am. Which we're going to do a couple of, couple of classes here this week. I'm so excited. Pretty amped up about it. Tell, tell us what you're going to be doing in the classes real quick. Oh, classes. Well, that, hmm. We're doing one on uh, sports, of course, oh, right? We got course. a little bit of sports, yeah. But it's a class situation on the business of sports. And so it's uh, maybe not like what ISO you might use. It's more like, how do I get a photo field credential to cover a game? Uh, what makes a picture publishable? How do I get published? This you know, is be such do, a good I need, do I need lighting? Maybe, maybe, you know. If you want to do commercial work, always a good idea to have a little lighting. So it's that kind of a progression, I think. Uh, you know, I think it's for anyone who wants to do sports and is shooting sports, so it doesn't matter where you're starting, whether you're new at it or just uh, a veteran at it. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be very informative and uh, we'll have a, a lot to say. We have an audience uh, of uh, uh, sports photographers who have uh, submitted questions on the business realm. All right. And so uh, you're going to be the moderator. I think you're, it's going to look like a game show almost, at, I think, at the, at the onset. But it's good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah so it should, should be fun and a lot of good learning. And what else are we doing? A light painting. We are doing a light painting All right. uh, workshop. It's macro, you know, small world stuff. Uh, light yeah, painted you don't out in the think field. Of light painting with macro. Oh man, it is so good for that. And we're going to be doing it during the daytime, outside. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because it can be done. Remember, it's macro. It's very yeah. small. You don't need a lot of light. You just need some light concentrated on small. So if you're into like flowers, I like the Olympics, but I like flowers too. You know. <laughs> and so I, I get into this kind of stuff. I like it. And then it'll also be on uh, live model. How to shoot light up, light paint live model, like All studio right. kind of thing. And then we'll do a large sort of um, outdoor scene, a more production thing. We've got a awesome awesome motorcycle coming in and a young lady who's going to pose by it and uh it's outside so during it's the that day. Dur no that one's at night okay that is at night and that should be a lot of fun so it's sort of three phases of light painting all wrapped into one very cool can i, can I also yeah. mention the last time that you and i did a class together and and we did it together but again That's i was just kind of there as as a moderator or prop dave taught the class is we went and shot a high school football game on location. We've done that twice. We did it many years ago, and then we recently did a new version of it where we went to an actual high school football game 
It did not rain. It was very close. close. But you get to see how Dave, number one, works a game. But number two is you're dealing with the worst lighting conditions. Lighting for high school football is notoriously bad. But I got to tell you, some of the things that you did with Flash as the players are coming out and stuff, and you watch him do it, and, and it looks so simple, and then you see the results, and you're like, this guy's a wizard. It, it, that, that, those classes are so good. The only thing that I don't like about those classes, and it is one thing, is Dave hits me with, with trivia the whole time, like football trivia is like, in the 1982 Super Bowl, who was it that sprained a, you know, pulled a hamstring as they were leading, you know, coming on the field for the second half break, and his name, uh, first name is, you know, Allen, and you're like, but Dave knows trivia on a crazy level. In the first high school video class that we did, I dominated in the trivia. You did. You completely skunked me in this last. So if you want to see Scott at his zenith, I had to get back at it. Absolute height zenith. Let me go out of the screen. He's that high. That is high. I mean, the questions you asked, I was like, how does he know these things? But he knows these things. That's what's so great. He it's does Google. I Google knows them, and <laughs> Google told me because. You have to. You got to bring your A game when you're on day. But anyway, we're honored to have you here. Thank you for for being here. Always great. To and be here, I, Scott. I can't wait Larry. to see those classes. You know, so many people sp sp making a living in sports photography, getting on the field, getting credentials, and all. It's it's tough. And you've done it all. And you've done everything from the commercial side of sports photography, the editorial side of sports photography. You've shot so many Olympics. I remember the first time I met Dave. Do you remember where it was? I do. I do. San Francisco. The FBI. The FBI. So Dave and I were both training FBI photographers. And we actually got the organizers to switch our classes so I could watch Dave's class. And uh, I remember sitting there and, and seeing some of your images come up. And I can still remember one of the images that just really made my jaw drop was you have, a, uh, I think it was during the Olympics, it's a volleyball player. And right. the, the colors and the composition of this shot were so amazing and then there was these other shots where like you, you're changing your white balance to blue and lighting with a with a gel and and I'm just sitting there going this is what I this is what I want to do this is the guy I want to be this is it Scott likes to shoot sports I think I think he because likes of that. Dave Black also interesting <laughs> side note I had Dave do a critique of my sports photography and 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 he said after he looked at some of my images and told me it was all crap he said what? he said it's mostly crap <laughs> No, but you know what, when you get a critique like that and, and you're like, this shouldn't be in here and here's why and all. Dave, I don't know if you remember this. I have a famous story that, that you did. And I brought up this picture and it was a, I can actually bring up the picture. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna, bring it, I'm gonna show you the picture. While I'm taking all the picture because it, it's, it's germane to this story, or it's a German story, I forget. Larry's gonna stall for a minute. I'm gonna pull up that picture it's coming here. Here we go. Okay, so on our chart it says, Dave Black, when you're on set, you're supposed to be doing a live demo. Right. Had me shaking in my boots, <clears> that's for sure. What's yeah. your live demo? I'm here right now, live. Okay, so this is it? This is it. <laughs> but I, I do have, I do have a, uh, um, a sort of, a, well, I've got my classes for Photoshop World. They oh, said, yeah. they, they, can so, you kind of talk about the, oh, wait, we, Scott's got his picture. But I yeah, I'm picture. with you, Larry. I'm with you. <laughs> All right, so can we show, can we show the screen? Okay. Nice. So this was the picture. This picture was in my portfolio many years ago. Mm -hmm. And after Dave left, it came out of my portfolio immediately. So, so here's how it went down. And I remember this. Dave won't remember this because this was probably maybe six years ago, seven years ago. It was a while back. Uh, so Dave's going through my portfolio. And he comes to this picture. And I'm so proud of this picture. And Dave goes, what's this doing in here? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, why is this, why is this here? And I said, well, wait a minute. This, this checks all the boxes, Dave. It's, it's, there's a famous saying in sports photography, two eyes and a ball. And I go, look, it's two eyes and a ball. And I said, I, I've got the, all the technical here. The shot is sharp. The background, there's, there's um, uh, separation from the background. I have all these things. And, and Dave says, you know what the problem with this shot is? I'm like, what? And he goes, this happens on every single play in every single game in all of football. Look, it's a guy running with the ball. He goes, you know who'd like this shot? His mom. I'm like, really? 
I love this shot. He goes, it doesn't belong in your portfolio. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, I, I'm starting to get it. And he's like, this isn't an action photo. This is nothing. His mom would love it. But he goes, this is, this is really, it, it's a nothing shot. It's just, this happens every, look, a guy running with the ball. He goes, was it taken during practice? Was this during warm-ups? Is this actually a game photo? He goes, if you're doing a trading card, if you were shooting for a trading card company, this is gold. But this doesn't tell a story of any, and, I, and, I, and as he's saying it, my light bulb is coming on. And he's like, this is, this is not a peak moment of action. This is just a moment that happens again and again. He goes, no one's gonna buy this. Don't send it to your wire server. And I'm like, and it was a, it was a turning point for me for realizing Okay. The beginning okay. of a wonderful relationship. No, but you know what? It was a great thing. It was an eye-opening moment. And that's exactly what my class is at Photoshop World. Wow. Isn't that great? I came here live, but you told me it, it is it's going to address exactly that idea. It's called Game Day, a sports photographer's guide. Oh, I'm, and, gonna, I'm gonna sit in that class. And it is geared towards the the amount of average sports pictures that we see today. So it's like a, a plague sort of of average pictures. They're just average and, and so forth. And we need to try and get everyone to taking sports pictures that tend to elevate that, get it up so they can get published. Wow. There's a C, and they're good pictures. This is a great, this is a good picture, but we need to take it, you know, get people up higher. Yeah, there's I, I want to see the level. great shot, which you do. You make great shots. You're, you are a gifted football hey, I have photographer. Something, I have something here uh, that y you don't ever see hardly. Right here. That's you catching a, the ball. A giant That's, catching the ball. Oh, no. A giant. You never see that, right? How rare is that? That's the kind of thing you want is something rare where, like, how often, seriously, does a receiver for the Giants catch the ball? It's rare. Hey, look, I have to go. I have to go get ready for a shoot. I have a live shoot coming up here in just a few minutes, so... I'm going to sneak out. I'm going to leave you in Larry's capable hands. All right. And uh, <laughs> hey, I do want. I just before I run, I just want to mention uh, you've got so many classes on Kelby. One, you are one of our most prolific teachers, and for a oh. very good reason. Uh, every time Dave comes out with a class, all I get is love letters. Thank you, oh. more Dave, more Dave. He's the best. But you are. You're a gifted teacher, Thank and you. it really, really comes across. And you still have in the history of the Photoshop World Conference, which by the way, 20 years this year, 20 years of Photoshop World, you still have, um, we used to do this thing at the closing where we would have instructors get up and if they were, is it their first time at Photoshop World, we wanted yeah. people to get to know who they were. And so we invited Dave to give just a, a 10 or 15 minute little talk at the end. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And this. in the history of Photoshop <laughs> World, you still have, from your talk, you got a standing ovation. And when you left the stage, it set the bar for every, I, whoever was up after <laughs> you was like, I'm screwed. <laughs> because you're, it was such a great, it was, and your whole talk was about teaching and about community and about sharing what you've learned and all. And it was just, we were, there was, you were either cheering or crying. It was an amazing speech. We'll never forget it. It was one of the, like, it was one of the most moving things that I've seen about education ever from anyone ever. It was amazing. Well, thank so. you so much, Scott. I tell you, it, the conference brings the best out of everyone, instructors and attendees, I think. And it's just, it is a great time. If you've never been to a Photoshop world, you should come. It is absolutely great learning, but it's just, it's just great fun. Well, I'm, I'm going to catch your class. Every once in a while, right, I do buddy. get to sneak out and say, that class sounds amazing. Now, we're going to go up one up on somebody or two up on somebody or something. And then I will be, go oh, look, there he goes. There we go. Oh. Photoshop World How much Orlando time do I have 2019. Left? You've got time. I've got to. Now, are you minutes? doing, are, Dave, are you doing this pre conference uh, sports action workshop? I am, yeah. So for Photoshop World in Orlando. So how is this going to, how does. Should I move over and take the center stage here? Or what do you oh, want yeah, to do? Oh, yeah, that's that's what it's all Should about. I do that. Okay. Let's get over by Larry. So let's talk about. Um, Drink out of Scott's cup. About your pre conference session. Oh. So. Holy At grail. Photoshop World, one of the things that people need to understand is there are classes throughout the week. Right. So there are, it's a, it's a three-day event that's actually a four-day event. So the three-day event, <clears throat> there are all these classes, and they're an hour, hour and a half uh, for the individual classes, the individual class sessions. And then there's also a trade show floor. But then the day before the conference starts, ah. there is a day of ah. pre-conference 
sessions, ah. and these are much more in depth. Well, so we're talking. These are hands-on workshops. Yeah, we're talking That's four so hours, great. five hours, six hours, and smaller groups generally, mm -hmm. and hands-on. So what is yours? Exactly. You know, a lot of people come up and just say, "I didn't know there was a workshop before the conference right. starts." They go, "Real," and so I'm going to. There are workshops, hands-on. You go out with the instructor. You go out with. Moose, you go out with me, you go right, out with like whoever. Photo walks and things. And you go out and you're making your own pictures. We guide you along and we help and teach and so forth. And mine is going to be a sports action venue at a skateboarding park. That's going to be cool. An indoor skateboarding park, I might add, in the beautiful comfort of being indoors here in South Florida. And uh, <laughs> I don't know who's working outside. They'll be sweating, but we're going to be in yes. some comfort. And uh, we've got uh, various athletes that are going to come in. This is a great park as well. It's got all the different kinds of what I would call sort of obstacles and apparatus and uh -huh. so forth that the, that the uh, skateboarders go through. And uh, yeah, so we'll be guiding and doing that. I love shooting skateboarding. We have the whole park to ourselves. Nice. So we should be able to get up, up very close, use wide angle lenses. Uh, you know, so if you go, I don't have a 300 millimeter this is real lens. Clo this is real close matter, to the right? venue too. Yes. It's real close to We're the like venue. We're like just 20, minute, 20 minutes away or something. We'll yeah. get on, we'll meet, get on the bus. We'll all go over at the same time. Yep. I'll tell jokes on the way over for 15 <laughs> minutes. And then when we get there, we'll like start making pictures of the skateboarders. And we should have, you know, carte blanche over the whole uh, skateboard park. We get to do what we want there. We have control of the athletes. Could you do that again? Could you? One more time. I'm going to get a 14 millimeter and crawl underneath you and like get a shot. So you don't usually get that kind of opportunity. So. Come to my pre-conference workshop, and if you don't like sports, then go to one of the other ones. Just look down the list and see the other ones that they have, a whole variety of pre-conference workshops. So Yeah, there's great stuff, and, and it, it is really going to be beneficial if you are a Kelby One member, because you save money, and then, oh, okay, so they've Ooh. just thrown up our graphic for the light painting. Ooh, I've learned a class. lot this about yeah. light painting from you. Um, not as much as Scott learned, but I learned a lot about yeah. light painting from you, and I did a whole bunch of experimenting with light painting, and I don't have my laptop with my light painting on it because I didn't know we were going to do that today. But yeah. uh, I have some of the pictures that I'm most proud of light painted right after I watched your class. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It is always exciting to hear that kind of stuff. What do we got here? We have something? No, no, no we'll do that later. Okay. Yeah. Just set it so up right there. talk about. So I have a class on light painting, and yep. it is a step-by-step -step teaching. It's uh, it will have a live demonstration. Um, the first half of it is going to be teaching the basics, sort of, and we'll do small world kind of macro kinds of things that are light painted. So if you're into that sort of thing, yeah. I cover that. And uh, what else we got? Next one there. Um, we'll also show how to do. You know, I'll explain how to do uh, live models, which you can do. I, I just want to caution you, this light painting is not the most practical way to do light. Right. But it is the most creative way. It, it is. produces the, the stunningly creative pictures. I bought so, so many of those tactical flashlights yeah. because of light painting. Now, exactly. this is what people think of. This is what right. I think of and when the, I think of light painting. The third phase that I'll teach in light painting is you know, star fields, how to capture star fields, and light paint large landscapes and so forth. Okay. Everybody likes the Milky Way. And then yep. we see a lot of pictures of the Milky Way, and then there's like an empty silhouette there. It's like, I'm going to teach yeah. you how to light it up. Our demonstration then is really going to go into a new phase of light painting for me. This is something I've just been doing now okay. just for about a year, and uh, it is pretty wild. It I'm is. Taking, uh, I'm taking athletes or action. I'm using uh, flash with that, okay. either speed light or strobe, doesn't sure. matter, right? That lights up the athlete, freezes the action, but then the... Uh, <laughs> Have you ever been, seen, you know what a party glow stick is? Yeah. Yeah. You know, party glow sticks, you know, you, you sure. kind of break it and then it glows in the dark and you right. wrap it around, kids put it around like a, a necklace, everything. I decided, well, what if, which is a great, that's, that's a great way to just every day a photographer show up and go, what if, right? Because I'm then ready. that leads to something new. And I said, what if I took party glow sticks and I just, um, you know, took like clear tape, you know, or whatever, you know, uh -huh. clear tape it around the racket and the handle of the racket of a tennis player. And then as they, we do a long exposure, which light paintings are long exposures, they would swing the racket through, 
flash, freeze the action with the ball and the racket there, and then continue swinging the different strokes and so forth. And can we back up one? Uh, yeah, that shot. That picture again. That shot is Just really so impressive. Get that idea. There it is. And that was the outcome. This is one of the very first ones I made, and it was like, I like this. It's a. It, I'm it's looking. Different. I was looking at that and trying to figure it out before you described yeah. what you were doing. I was trying to figure that out. And it just looks like it was painted after the fact. It, it yeah. doesn't look like that was a captured it's moment. A, it's a single shot moment. And I will do this live demonstration on stage with a tennis player at my light painting Photoshop. Oh, sorry. My light painting, <laughs> my light painting Photoshop world class. So come join me there and have a lot of fun in the dark. That's what we do, kind of. That's so, yeah. going to be very cool. Cool. Um, what, else, what else have I got there? What's my next? Oh. Okay, this is my, my, they said, can you teach something on this yes. live broadcast? I said, yes, this is my other class at uh, Photoshop World in Orlando, Game Day, A Sports Shooter's Guide by Dave Black. Okay, next slide. <coughs> there it is. And my tip for the day is fill the frame. Okay. Now, Scott's not here anymore. You remember his picture? Did he fill the frame with the athlete? No, but I thought it was kind of an interesting composition because the athlete took up that portion, you know, the entire left third. He's using rule of thirds for composition. And the open space, the, the athlete is running into the open space. I can see where Scott thought that was a great image because I'm and looking it was at a it good image. going, that's it was a, a really image. cool image. It, but it didn't fill the frame. It didn't fill the frame. And I think this is a a nemesis of what I see in, in sports photography today. Okay. So we have an example up there right now of, this is what we see a lot of, and yes. it looks fine. And you take this picture at the game and you think, I've nailed it, here's a guy's okay. good position. I even have nice light. You know, the light is working for me sure. and so forth. But then when the editor, and what I'm talking about is, what does the editor think when he sees this? What's the, the people that you were working for, the trading card company, the uh, high school uh, annual, the uh, Sports Illustrated, uh, the website of the college, who, whoever you're, you're working for, they look at this and they're going to crop it like that. They're going to go, well, we got to crop this thing. We have to do something with it. Yeah. And there, it doesn't have an impact, I think. And I think that's the problem I continue to see. I see a lot of the sameness, the sort of the average, so to speak. Let's back it up again, if we could do that. Oop, we're going to back it up, back up one, back up, there we go. This is what we see, yeah. next slide. It's not that impactful, we see it every day. Next shot, they're gonna have to crop it to do okay. something with it. And my point is, shoot it this way instead. You know, in other words, next slide would be fill the frame. Fill the frame, this is not cropped. You know, as, as, as the player was advancing, running with the ball, yeah. out of my peripheral vision, I could see other photographers putting down their 400 and picking up a 70 to 200. Sure. And I just stuck with it. In fact, I actually had a, a 400 with a 1.4 converter on it. So I had like 580 millimeters or whatever. Picked him up and he was waist up and he just got closer and closer. And I just kept following and following and shooting and shooting. And that is the impactful shot. When an editor sees this come across their laptop while they're getting ready to decide what they're going to put up on the wire, then it's like, Holy smoke, you know, everything else they don't even think about. They don't even look at the, the other pictures. They just go, man, it gets their attention instantly. And that's yeah. what you want to try and do. Next picture. Same thing. 70 to 200, everyone can shoot horse racing. You see the entire horse, legs yep. are off the ground, all that kind of stuff. Use, if, use a longer lens, use a 300. This is shot with a 300 millimeter and just wait. Now you have to wait and wait and wait and wait until they're close enough and they fill the frame and keep on shooting until the last thing you see are the goggles of the jockey. You've got to get, you have to train yourself to do that. Any, any sport that's in the water, swimming, water polo, right. you, their head is the only thing that's in the, their face is the only thing that's out of exactly. the water. So you need probably some length lens here, but you need to be patient enough. This is not cropped. None of these are cropped. Same thing here. The girl had started doing the spin. The young lady was doing the spin. I used a 70 to 200, 200 millimeters, took her full body in, put that down. She continues to spin. I pick up a 400 and then I shoot a horizontal. Click, 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 click. So I get that as well. And it, this is not cropped. This is just the way, well, why not just take the vertical and crop it? Well, 
you lose some quality. But sure. partly you lose quality, but the more important is, is that that other picture that fills the frame gets the attention of the editor right away. Holy cow, that's something I haven't seen. It's about time somebody takes something that tight. That's, you know, Why it's, not, it's you know? So helpful. Why not? It's so helpful that you have these extra uh, insights. And the fact that you're working in the field and saying, here's what everybody else is doing, now here's how to do it differently. All right. This, because we're all looking for that. This class is designed to help you understand how to separate yourself from all the other photographers so that your work can get published. Here's how people see it, right? You use a long lens, here comes a motorcycle guy yep. flying in the air, it looks like that, bang, you're gonna have to crop it, probably to make it useful to somebody. But I'm gonna shoot it like this. Wow. Now you're thinking, Dave, I don't have a 400 millimeter lens. Well, this is shot with a, a 24 to 70 at 24 millimeters. Wow. So don't give me any, I don't have it. I don't have a big lens. I, I can't, I can't shoot sports. <laughs> I can't. Yes, you can. Well, yes, you can. And that's the kind of people we are. You want to try and just use what you have. Back yeah. it up again. Back I just, I don't think of the wide angle lenses Back. for shooting motorcycle sports like that. That's just something that there you're you go. about. It's going to take some patience and it might take a little bit of courage, you know, to be uh, in you there. You think? Right. But I tell you, the impact this has, you know, on your client, this was, this was shot for Kawasaki, uh -huh. and it, it's, it's, you know, it's like, wow! Now, is this the they shot go, where you wow. actually lost your right leg? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I was scared to death. But I, I tell bet. you, that is part of the excitement. When you start using a wide-angle lens to shoot sports, and of course, this is an orchestrated picture here. Sure. It's orchestrated, right? This is another commercial shoot. I mean, I want it so close, I want people to feel like they're going to get hit by the athlete. Well, they're in, you're definitely in the moment, and this is not something that you see on TV. So you're bringing people even closer than what they're used to seeing when they watch from the stands, when they see it on TV. Absolutely. In this case, this rider, he's, he was, he's a multiple-time national champ and world record holder. He actually had to turn his head away because I was so close. That's why his head's just turned just that slight bit. I'd stepped in that close. He knows I'm coming. It's a commercial shoot. Dave, this but, is such cool stuff. And I, I really appreciate that people will be able to catch up with you and take these classes on Kelby One at mm -hmm. Photoshop World. I'm mm -hmm. going to be in your classes at Photoshop World yeah. sitting next to Scott Kelby. Right. And you know who else is going to be at <laughs> Photoshop World? Who? You ever hear of this guy, Peter Hurley? Yes. Peter Hurley is going to be at Photoshop a World, wild man. the headshot king, he and he's going to be here with us, Skyping in, in oh, okay. mere moments. Nice. Uh, yeah. Sweet. So as yeah. soon as I get word from our control room, he will be Skyping in. Uh, I got Call a little in the bit of... control room here. Yeah, Call I've, I've got, my, got my IFB, so I'm waiting Houston, here from the control room. Houston, we have a problem. Um, and then I also, in the meantime, while we're waiting for Peter to come up, I w Oh, oh, okay. Um, I want to, I want to tell you guys about this. Now, I was, I was the very first ever, ever, ever reviewer of Spider Holster gear uh, for B and H Photo back in the day. So, Spider Holster very first came out with this thing where they can, where you can put the camera onto a special belt or add an attachment to your belt. And I have this stuff still. I love it. Uh, I, the review was great because I really appreciate what Spider Holster does. Now, since then, they've come out with more and more and more gear. So I want to show you my favorite setup, and I'm going to show you kind of a standard setup. This, this little thing screws into, it's a quarter 20 screw on the bottom. So this screw goes into the bottom of just about any camera. They all have the quarter 20. Uh, nice little Allen screw, very thoughtfully developed because this Allen wrench, this spring-loaded Allen wrench, stays with the mount, so that's kind of nice. And you use the Allen wrench to tighten the screw. This goes on to the bottom of your camera. Now I'm going to show you an alternate version, which is the one that I use all the time. And I'm going to have to do this so you can catch what I'm doing. So go to my right hip here. Okay, so this is my this is my spider holster mount. I'm going to take this off so you can see just this. Now, this is on my belt, okay? You can actually buy spider holster belts that have these big protective things around them. I just like this. It's nice, 
tiny little thing. It's very, very sturdy. It stays on my belt forever till I take my belt off. And then this is my favorite plate mount. And I'll tell you why. Every camera that I have, and I have some borrowed gear here from Kelby, but every camera that I have has an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom. And this one is from Three-Legged Thing. This is an L bracket, Arca Swiss L bracket. But all of my cameras, every camera that I have has an Arca plate on the bottom. And so you just mount that on there and then tighten it down. Okay, so now this is ready to go. Just with that quick twist, this is a piece of spider holster gear. And now, I'm like that. I'm on walking on uh, my photo walk, and it's just, it's there, it's sturdy. And to take it off, notice that it's stuck there, okay? It doesn't just pop out. You're not gonna be climbing up the side of a hill and have this thing just pop out. So you actually have to flip this up. There's a little switch here. So you flip that up, and it comes out, comes right out very easily. And if you want it pointed at a different angle, that's why I like these two posts here. If you want to point it at a different angle and have it carry like that, it's very comfortable. You've got your hands free, you're walking, you're hiking, you're doing things like that. Well, you can get this gear, if you're a Kelby One member, for 25% off, all Spider Holster gear. And this just happens to be the gear that I have with me today. You can buy kits with these different plates, you can buy the belts, you can get uh, the Arca Swiss setup that I have here. And then they also have some things like camera grips, I don't have one of those with me today, but they have a lot of very cool things, all oriented toward keeping your gear handy and in your hands securely and safely. So this is my favorite one, the Spider Holster uh, Arca Swiss clamp. That's my favorite one because all my cameras, like I said, they all have the Arca Swiss on them and then I can just pop them onto my belt. And um, when I heard what we were doing here at Kelby One today, we were doing a phone conference and planning meeting and stuff like that. And they said, oh, we're gonna have this cool stuff from Bay Photo and we're gonna have um, all these different things and then Scott's gonna do the demo. And, and then they said, and spider holsters. And I'm like, oh, I got all the spider holster stuff. Can I be the demo model for the spider holster stuff? Cause I got that gear. So I love it. And you can see it there in the, in the video. Uh, that's on screen right now, it's just so handy. And I, I absolutely, I'm one of those people that absolutely never carries a camera around my neck. I have neck straps in a drawer. I take all my neck straps off. I never even put them on new cameras when I buy them. If somebody gives me a camera with a neck strap, I, I take it off. I just don't like neck straps, that's just me. But I love the spider holster setups and it's very, very comfortable. Great way to work. So I think I've said the word spider holster a whole bunch of times. Now I'm going to say the word Peter Hurley. I can't wait to talk to my friend Peter. How are you, sir? What's going on? How's it sound? Oh, you sound great. I can hear everything that you're saying, and I hope that our audience can too. Peter, the Headshot crew, tell me what's going on with you. What's going on in your world today? I am in my studio. I'm about to do a, a couple shoots. And, um, you know, headshots are my thing. So, I, and I always, uh, I'm kind of psyched because I got a returning client coming in today that hasn't been with me since 2010. How many of you guys love returning clients? Is that amazing or what? That's very cool. It's cool. It's cool. So I, I'm just, you know, hanging out in the studio. I, I just have to say that Westcott this past week announced a new flex kit. So I set up to show you guys the Cineflex from me that I designed with them and it's just becoming available. We had it, uh, we discontinued the flex kit so it's been off the market for a little while. So I'm like, excited and I'm lighting myself up with it. And I just did all that. I was sitting there and I was like, I should show them the new flex kit. And, oh, uh, I gotta see, I gotta see this. This is so important to me because I have a couple of Westcott flex panels that are one by ones and I just got a one by two mostly because I want to be like Peter Hurley when I grow up. So I can't wait to see what you're, what you're teaching today, Peter. Well, we've got, uh, I've got three, the new kit comes with three one by twos. They're one of them. These are bi-color. Uh, we also have a daylight kit. So the, those are two different options for you. And then there's a pro kit, which is two one by threes and a one by two. And they come with these really cool dimmers. And, and I've, been, I, I've been shooting daylight for years and I've gone on these shoots. I just went into a, a bar the other day on Friday and I was like, how am I going to shoot this without, you know, how did I ever shoot without the bicolor? So I went in with my bicolor flex 
and uh, and I matched the the tone in the restaurant, and the shot came out perfect. So I was really excited to have this this option for myself. Yeah, kind of cool. It, it definitely gives you a lot more options when you're going on location. I have uh, you know kind of a lockdown studio. I love my daylight flex panels. And they're, they're great for me, but you're right. Every once in a while, I do want to add some warmth. And what I end up doing is adding CTO gels, but you don't have that fine tuned control and that flexibility in the moment like you have with a bicolor. Yeah, and the price between the bicolor and the daylight isn't huge. So I think it's worth the extra investment. So that's why we shipped it. And it's been really great to have and running around with it. And it's super portable. Um, and I'm, I'm fired up about it because it was, it just came out and they just announced it last Monday. So it's pretty, pretty good stuff. But yeah, if anybody has any questions for me, I can't see the chat though. Cause I'm on this thing. I was watching the chat on Facebook before, and there's so many people in here and you guys, I hope you're going out and photographing people and got your headshot headshots going. And if you don't definitely come see me and the headshot crew, I'm happy to coach you and figure out how you can make some money with headshots this year. That's my thing, and, and getting people to have some success with it was, is what it's all about. So we're doing a Kelby special today, um, but right now, you know, Murphy's Law, my site's down. Can you believe that? Your site is down? Your site, my site is down today. My web guy's working on it as we speak. I think it's still down, which is, hold on. Well, that's okay, because, and, I, and I'll tell you why it's okay, Peter, because we're going to have links on the Kelby One website to get people back over to your website. So as soon as your tech issues are handled, we'll push people over to, to that. But I want to talk about, man, there's so many different things that you have. You have classes at Kelby One about the headshot. You've got your headshot crew and your special deal today. You've got um, stuff coming up at Photoshop World that's headshot yeah. related. So yeah. unpack a little bit of that stuff for us. Well, at Photoshop, well, well, first of all, I've got a bunch of classes on Kelly Wood. If you guys haven't watched them, go watch them because I, you, not only will you learn about headshot photography, but you'll see my metamorphosis. One of the, one of the ones I was the heavy in. You should just go to watch to see the way. <laughs> I think it's the art of the edit. I look at that one and I'm like, man, what I do to myself? I think it was that one. But these are really cool, and um, I love doing all the Kelby stuff, um, and I love going to Photoshop World. I, I'm so glad that we're doing Orlando and Vegas. I can't wait to do both. I am in a new class um, that I've been teaching lately called Headshot Career Startup. I think that you're leaving money on the table if you're a portrait photographer and you're not adding headshots to your repertoire. So I'm going through exactly you know, how to start up a career in headshot photography, and then support you through it and, and through the book uh, uh, at Peach Pit about my book that Scott, that I should, that you can see it. It's called The Headshot. And uh, Scott and I worked on it together. And I'm, I'm so proud of that book. And it's, uh, it was uh, got a ton of information in it. So, you know, if you don't have the book, go fire it up, it'll get you started. But come see me at Photoshop World and sit in on one of these classes. The other classes are. And tips. So even if you're not looking to start a business and just being a hot direction of your subject is what it's taking a human being and putting them in front of your camera and coaching them is what we do. And if you don't have coaching skills, you kind of feel like a fish in front of your lens. I'm going to give you the coaching skills you need in order to get a great myself on my ability to direct. And I want you to do that. Peter, I, I can't tell you how much of a fan I am of your headshot work. I remember when you were working on the book with Scott. I've been to your Photoshop World classes. I'm going to go any free time that I have. I'm dedicated because I, I've seen some of the stuff come up in my social media. We're friends on, on Facebook, and I see some of these newer headshots, and I know I just need to fix my headshots, and I need to fix the pictures that I'm taking of other people and my own personal headshot and, uh, and improve. And I've, I've actually bookmarked, and I've got some Peter Hurley uh, headshot crew examples that I'll be using in my stuff. So Peter, I, I know that um, some of the folks are, are hearing a little bit of a breakup on some of the Skype stuff. So we do have to uh, move on to our next segment, but I, I can't move on without first saying thank you so much to my headshot hero, Peter Hurley. He's got a great set of deals. Peter, you've got some amazing deals that we're going to send people to 
on your website that are part of the Headshot crew. And by the way, if this is even this much interesting to you to learn about headshots, Peter has a group the Headshot Crew, this is actually his thing. He's in there coaching and teaching ongoing. Now, is that what the special is for, Peter? Yeah, we're doing uh, $40 off our yearly membership if you go to headshotcrew.com forward slash Kelby1. When it works, Okay, not it'll, up yet. It'll be working soon. Uh, this, is, this is a great deal, and I can't recommend this crew enough. The Headshot Crew is a great way to learn and to really refine it and nail what it is that you're doing with portrait shooting. And just like I said, Peter is the best of the best. I've learned from him for a lot of years. I'm still learning from him. And I really want to learn some of the newest lighting techniques, the crafting that he uses on his headshot shots. And uh, if you're not following Peter Hurley, you absolutely have to follow Peter Hurley. What a great, great photographer. Peter Hurley, thank you so much for being a part of this. Can't wait to see you in Orlando in about a month and a half. That's going to be a blast. Okay, so now we have some cool stuff from our next sponsor, Platypod. The Platypod has just been off the chain. Just everybody, you know, Scott talks about it every week on the grid. I have three Platypods myself and I carry them all over the place. I use them on shoots all the time. The Platypod is such a versatile thing, yet you would think that it's, um, you know, it's just so obvious. It is this beautiful flat surface that takes the place of your tripod. It's so well thought out, and it comes with uh, these spiked feet, and the spiked feet go down or up, then you're looking on screen, you can see the accessory kit. You can see how it can be used in so many different ways. So the Platypod holding a good ball head, and we have here on set, we have the really right stuff ball heads. So this is a Platypod Max. And everything about these is just so well thought out. The Platypod Max has this ability to hold the, uh, the ball heads, really right stuff ball head. And you know the spike feet that I told you about? On the Max, there's this thing that's actually here. It looks like permanently, but if you want to get rid of that for some reason because something else is mounted on it, your spiked feet come off like this. Now the spiked feet, let me take them out of this holder. The spiked feet have a spike on one side, so you can put them in the mount system right here and put the spike down. So let's say you're putting it on a tree branch or something and you don't want it to slide around, well you put the spiked feet down. But let's say you're doing something like I've done recently, put it on a car hood. Well then you put it with the spikes going up, very easy to just put it in there, finger tight, and then the spikes go up, the little rubber feet go down, and you see this little uh, washer on here. That's how you can tighten it down to whatever length you want. Okay. So again, very well thought out. It will hold just about any tripod, or rather any ball head, like a tripod would. But the other really great thing about this is that just about anywhere that you can't use a tripod, whether it's rough terrain, or you're in a location, you know, a touristy location, and the tripod police are there, and you pull out your tripod and start setting it up, and they go, oh, no, 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 you can't do, you can't do a, a tripod here. Um, you pull out the platypod and they kind of go, oh, what's that? Okay, yeah, you can use that, whatever. And so you put your, put your tripod, or rather your uh, camera on it. All right, so I'll show you this real quick. Okay. There we go. All set. And so you can point it in any direction. You get it up on here nice and tight and uh, point it up, down. You can strap these things. You see this little slot right here? You can strap this to a pole. I've done it strapped to a basketball pole. It's very cool, very versatile. Watch the grid if you want to learn more about the Platypod or ask me. My name is Larry. By the way, Platypods got this great deal, 15% off anything. And by the way, Platypods are already very, very affordable. So 15% off, an even better deal for Kelby One members. Guys, we've been on set for a little while here. We're gonna toss to a break and be right back with more great screaming deals and more training just for you. See you in a minute.
when you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. Getting into the head shop business, consistency is the key. All right, if you can become consistent in your work, you can nail down the look of it and capture some interesting expressions. You got something there, you should be charging for it. You can make a little extra money on the side shooting some headshots. Number one would be how about getting a little bit closer and taking some headshots of people? Right now, in this day and age, people really need them, and you could be the one to take them. Number two, put some money in your pocket. Headshots is a perfect one for you to make that jump into charging. In the long run, I've been shooting the same stuff, the same look since I started 18 years ago. It still works, it still puts money in my pocket, and it's awesome. And number three, you're gonna up your game with this class. You're gonna get a little tips that will get you better and you'll be able to create consistency. So really, it's about stepping out there and getting people in front of your camera and not being afraid. That's the most important thing about this class. Hey guys, I'm Peter Hurley, and I want you to come check out my latest class at kelby1.com. So this class covers curves, and a lot of people are intimidated by curves because it has a histogram, and there's a whole lot of little features on there. People just go to levels and do some simple things, and that's great, but you can do so much more with curves. There's so much more nuance. If you want to adjust just the fill for a certain part, you can bring that out just with a couple clicks. If you need to adjust the color, you can do that. And then there's all these other effects that you can do with curves by applying blending modes and clipping it. And how you can control tonality, how you can control color, and get into all the little nitty gritty features of the curves and the curves adjustment layer. The whole point is to really make it as easy to understand as possible. Unlock the power of curves. Check out my new class on kelby one com. Everybody, uh, we are over here in the studio. We're going to do a live shoot for you. This is Sue. She's our model. She's helping us out. And uh, I've been lucky enough to work with Sue on a couple different projects. So if you see me on my new tour, you'll see some of the shots that we did with Sue. Uh, well, let me tell you why I wanted to do this shoot today. So this past week, uh, I got an email from one of our members. And uh, we, we really, we, we read our forums, we read the community, and when people you know, ask for a very specific thing, we always want to do as much as we can. So I'm going to read you the note here. It's on, I have it on my laptop. Uh, and it is from one of our members. Her name is Monica Lister. So thank you, Monica, for sending this in. And she's asking about a class that I have uh, here on Kelby One. Uh, I do these classes called Photo Recipes, where I basically take you through the entire process. Oh, someone's calling me on my phone. Oh, it is a spam call. This is how we handle spam calls. No, and now it's gone. Anyway, so um, uh, she had some very specific questions. And she, here's what she read. She, she wrote, she said, uh, hi, Kelby One. First of all, I want to say that I love you guys. Great way to start an email 
Everyone should start their email that way. Um, next, it says, I love watching your videos, but sometimes when I try to recreate the same, the same scenarios, I can't. And I think the biggest reason is that some of the angles, heights, and distances are missing. Now, normally in my classes, I, I, I do say the light stands up six feet or whatever, uh, but I'm going to go uh, in this little video much more precise and let you really uh, know exactly how far everything is away. Because I think that's what it is, is she knows, like, she, she even lists, I, I got these things, but there's a couple of things that she wanted to know that were, that were very precise. So we're going to do that. She says, uh, uh, videos that I watch on YouTube don't really spend any significant time on this. That's right, they don't. Um, but um, I think it's crucial. She says, I love how Scott offers his starting point for his camera settings, which is burned into my brain. Anyway, she goes and she lists all the different things. She goes, I, I get the angle of the beauty dishes around 45 degrees and all that. So we're going to do the shoot. I'm going to take you through the whole process. Step number one is, and if you're shooting, uh, now, uh, by the way, the, the, the shot we're going to do is a beauty head shot. This also works really well for just headshots in general. So it can be a beauty headshot, it can be a business headshot. So I use the same lighting setup for both. Now, I'm gonna build the whole thing from start to scratch. We're gonna start with just one light. We're using Profoto D ones. So I have the B ones when I go out on location and the D ones, D as in daylight, when I'm inside the studio. So we're using uh, a, a D one. So we have a D one up here and we're using a metal beauty dish. Now, Beauty Dish is, I love the Beauty Dish because it has a slightly different look than a soft box. If you've got really nice cheekbones, it makes them scream. It is really just an amazing, it, it's a little more contrasty. It's still soft, but it's a little more contrasty. What makes it soft is an accessory for the Beauty Dish that is called a sock. And if you look on the outside of this, we have the sock on here. This is the sock. So if I'm shooting a sports portrait, I'm not putting the sock on. If I'm shooting a beauty shot and I want the light to be soft, I put this little sock over it. So if you have a beauty dish from whatever brand that you have, make sure you have the sock or everything will be kind of a little too punchy. The sock is very inexpensive, but it's definitely worth it. And it's simply just kind of putting a diffusion panel in front of your subject. Now, for this to work, I'm gonna have to shoot under it. So I have it on a boom stand. You don't necessarily have to have it on a boom stand, but it sure makes it easier. Uh, I've shot the beauty, this beauty look many times on just a regular light stand, and it works just fine. So we have one light, we're using a beauty dish as our modifier, and we have a diffusion in front of it so it's nice and soft. I'm tethered into Lightroom here, so I have an orange cable from our friends at Tether Tools. By the way, you know why it's orange? so you don't trip over it in the dark. Now, it's not very dark in this studio because we're doing video. So we have video lighting in here that would normally not be in my studio. Normally the lights are fairly low and having that orange cable just keeps you from tripping over it. All right, let's talk about camera settings. My camera settings, I am in manual mode. Anytime that I'm shooting with flash or strobes, I'm always going to be in manual mode on my camera. The reason is, and if you've never shot in manual before, you can do this, no problem. You don't have to understand the whole philosophy behind manual, but you need to set some very specific settings. One is this, your shutter speed. So we have three settings we're gonna do in the camera, right? Shutter speed, you're gonna choose your f-stop and um, your ISO. For my shutter speed, I know when I walk in the studio already what it's gonna be. One, 1 25th of a second. So that's my setting, 1 1 25th of a second. Why 1 125th of a second? It's because it makes sure that my flash and my camera stay in perfect sync. If you raise your shutter speed too high, it will get out of sync and you'll start to see a gradient go that gets higher and higher, the higher the shutter speed until you can't see your subject anymore at all. So what's a safe, like my go-to shutter speed? Anytime, 1 1 25th of a second. I'm shooting in the studio. I want the cleanest shots possible. What's my ISO? 100. The lowest, cleanest number that I could put on my particular camera. Now, depending on your make and model camera, it could be 200. But for most cameras these days, it's 100 ISO. So now I know that my shutter speed is 1 1 25th of a second. I know that my ISO is gonna be my cleanest, lowest number, 100 in this case. What f-stop do I use? This is easy. I want everything to be in super sharp focus, f11. That is my go-to settings, F11, 1 125th of a second for my shutter speed, my ISO at 100. 
So I set those in manual and just dial them right in and let's make sure that they are still correct. 1 1 25th of a second F11 at 100 ISO. What do I set my white balance at? Let me kind of re-aim there. False alarm, not actually gonna shoot yet. <laughs> she started to pose, I'm like, it's okay. Just make a mess with the stuff. All right, so um, what is my white balance? I set my white balance to flash. It's a symbol that looks like a lightning bolt. So that way I know my skin tones are gonna be pretty darn close. And what's weird is uh, the flash setting is very, very close to the same setting as daylight. If you go back and forth between flash and daylight white balance, they're gonna look very, very similar, but there is a slight difference in how they compile the flash one. So it is a little bit different. So I'm in flash mode, I'm in manual, you know the rest. So the first thing we do is we're gonna do a test shot. Now the background behind her, if you see here in the studio, it looks like it's a, it's a roll of white seamless. But look how far away we are. Let's start with that. How far away from the background? Looks like we are about eight to 10 feet. It really doesn't matter because there's no way this light's going to reach the background. But so Sue's here and let's see. Yeah, about eight or nine feet probably to the background behind her. It really doesn't matter because you're not going to see the background anyway. The background's just gonna turn gray. The reason why is this light is not gonna go and make it back eight feet or nine feet. It's just not gonna make it back there. So the white background is gonna turn gray. Let's go ahead and take a test shot. Uh, and I have my power at 7.3. So it's pretty, a pretty high setting of power. But let's go ahead and take a test shot. It's just a test shot. And so you don't have to look super fabulous. But let's take a look. All right, so here's our first shot. We're tethered into Lightroom. And if you look on the back of the camera, the color actually looks a bit more natural than we're seeing here in Lightroom. That's just because of my screen, um, but looks looks a bit more natural. So it doesn't really look bad, except for the thing that I don't like most about just putting up a beauty dish like this is look at the shadows under her chin. There's some pretty heavy shadows. There'll also be shadows under her eyes because the soft, the beauty dish itself is directly in front of her. Let me just walk over here. It's directly in front of her. It's aiming back at her eyes at a 45 degree angle. And it is about two to two and a half feet in front of her. So it's pretty darn close. The reason why I want this light so close is the closer I get that light, the softer the light will be. So I want the beauty dish to be very close to her. Now, if I move it two feet close or three feet, it's not gonna make that big a difference. It's not like if I move it in six more inches, all of a sudden everything's different. The light will just get a little brighter and I'll have to go turn the power down a little. But right now it's at a pretty good 45 degree angle. It's aiming right at the center of her face and it is about two and a half feet, maybe three feet in front of her face. Now, how are we gonna get rid of those shadows? Well, we have a couple of different choices. Choice one is to actually bring in a reflector. So I'm gonna have my assistant Julio bring in a reflector. We're gonna use silver. Uh, other side, there we go, we're just gonna use silver. Here we go, we have just a standard reflector. And how high do we wanna put this reflector? The reflector is just gonna bounce light from the top light back in to fill in some of those shadows. So I'd like to get this reflector as high as I can get it in the frame without actually seeing it. So Julio, let me go ahead and look as you position it and I'll tell you how high to go. All right, higher, 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 higher. Keep going, keep going, keep, keep going, stop. All right, bring it down a little bit. Okay, he's as high as he can get it in the frame without me actually seeing it. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna hide this uh, uh, thing. See, I'm gonna make it full screen so you can see even bigger. Here we go. So here's the second shot, same, same look and all. And the reflector doesn't look like it's doing anything whatsoever. Let me go back and look. And, and, and by the way, let me just go back to look at the previous shot. And uh, it doesn't look like it did anything at all. This is, by the way, the main reason you want to have an assistant. Because then you can blame the assistant. You don't want to take any heat for this. You want to go, Julio, your position was terrible. So we're going to, Julia's whispering something to me. I think, it, I think what he said it was, it's not my fault. It really isn't his fault. So the, we are not, we want the light to hit it and bounce back up to her. We don't have it in the right position. Where do you think the right position might be? Lower? Right there, let's take another. Now, hold on, can you pull it out, Julio? Take a look at Sue's face while he pulls this in. You can actually see it getting brighter as he pulls it in, watch. 
up a little. There you go. And don't tilt it quite so much. Let's just see where we're at. This should be better. All right, it's quite a bit better. Actually, the shadows here are much better. Look at that. So it's almost forming a V in the previous one. And here, you can see how it fills in the, the light under her eyes and under her chin quite a bit. So that made a big difference. So what the message there is, is when I was directing Julio where to put it, I was wrong. I would never admit that on camera, of course. Julio is a photographer himself. He knew where to put it. When he did not take my direction, you'll notice it's perfect. Anyway, back to our story. So that would be my first, it's, that's the most inexpensive way to have another second light. If you think the silver is too much, if it's too punchy and this light from underneath is too harsh, you can switch to a white reflector and it will be much less. Silver is going to reflect the most amount of light. White is going to reflect the least amount. And so, and we usually use light, quite a, a white, honestly, for like product shots and stuff to fill in. But if you put it up there, you think it's, you only have two choices, either lower it to lower the amount of bounce or switch to a right reflector. Now, if I had my druthers, and I do because I'm in my own studio, I would, instead of using a reflector, I would use a second light, just a small soft box with another light. So we have one over here. We're just going to pull it in. And to answer the question, how far in front of her? Well, it's actually lined up right with the beauty dish. So it's almost touching her. It is just a couple of inches from the edge of the softbox, the bottom edge of the softbox, from touching her knees. So it's very, very close. It is aimed up at a 45 degree angle. So what you have, the top light is aimed down at a 45 degree angle. The bottom light is aimed up at a 45 degree angle. So it looks like this. This is why they call this look a clamshell, because it looks like a clam, and you shoot in between that space between the two of them. So you have, this is your shooting window from here to here. That's where you're gonna be shooting. That's inside the clamshell. So now that we have our second light, what do we set the power for that one? You wanna make sure that your second light is lower powered than the top light. Here's why. When you bottom light people, that's what you do to make them look scary and aggressive. Like if I have a football player and he's got his pads on and he's like, I'm just gonna light him from the bottom. And, and think about it, at Halloween, how you take the flashlight and you put it under your face and you talk like this. You know. That is because, you talk like a pirate apparently. That is because that under lighting makes you look scary. I don't wanna uh, under light my subject. So my top light is usually at least one stop in power. So if this at seven, I usually put the bottom one at like six. I want it to be at least one stop brighter. So most of her light is coming from the top. Most of her light should come from here. And a little bit of fill should come from here. I'm just trying to get rid of those shadows. So let's go ahead and take a shot. Now, to turn them on, I'm running everything from this wireless remote that's on top of my camera. I don't know if you can see that. It is a pro photo air remote. This is it right here. And I'm, I'm able to turn the power up or down for any light. I'm able to turn them on and off simply by just pressing the letters A, B, and C. When I set up my lights, whatever light I set up first, I assign to the letter A. So that way I know that's my front light. Whatever light I set up next would be called B. So B is the next one. So we just brought a second light in. I would have my assistant assign that, which we already did, to channel, excuse me, to group B. So now for me to turn on B, I hit the letter B, and I hit this little button called head, and now it turns that on. Well, actually, let's hit B, sorry. All right, so now I have A and B turned on. So this lets me control the power of A, pressing B lets me control the power of B, and there's a test button as well. So let's go ahead and take a shot. Now we have both lights turned on, and I just learned that I have six minutes and 44 seconds. That's more time than I even need because I've already explained all the hard stuff. Here we go. Let's go ahead and take a shot. Sue, you can look semi, semi okay in this one because uh, the lighting is starting to look good. The lighting has looked pretty bad up to this point. Now it's going to get better. And let me lock down my uh, camera here. Let me get a better composition. Oh, it looks great right there. Voila. All right, let's take a look. All right. Yeah, look how much better the shadows are from, let me go back one image. Here's with just the reflector, which was better. Let's go back two. 
Dark shadows, lesser shadows, and boy, my Lightroom is going uh, kind of funky. There we go. All right. Uh, have you noticed, though, how much faster the images are coming in? If you update to the latest version of Lightroom, the tethering is not only tremendously faster because we're moving 30 megapixel raw photos over there, um, but it also more stable, much more stable. All right, so now it's looking pretty good. The only thing that I'm not too crazy about at this point is that the background is gray, and I would want a solid background. For a beauty shot, you often see a, a, a very solid background. For business corporate headshots, like you see Peter Hurley doing, same thing. So how do I get a white background? I can either throw a light on that background and make it very, very bright, but I have a different technique I use. I put another softbox directly behind her. Then I turn it on, and so the light comes from behind her. It lights and sculpts the side of your face. You notice her hair is up in a ponytail behind her head, so that leaves a really clean line on, on her cheekbones and on the side of her face for the light to come through. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a third light and put it behind her. Now, let's talk about where it goes and how to position it, because this is key. And it's looking pretty good what we have. Let's go ahead and pull in the third light, Julio. So this is another Profoto D1. We're gonna put it, with, we're using an octa-shaped box. By the way, you don't have to use an octa-shaped box. A square box is fine. It's just, it's just what we happen to have set up. Many decisions you will find in the studio are made by what's convenient. Well, you know what's convenient? We had this one already set up. The key technique here is to not aim the light directly at you. Take a look, I have this angled back the light is actually aiming at the ceiling, not back at my camera position. If I have it tipped towards where it comes back towards me, what's gonna happen is the light's gonna look all washed out. We're gonna lose a lot of contrast. So by aiming it up at the ceiling, we don't lose all the contrast, it keeps the contrast. So that light is, it is one foot from her back. All right, so it's one foot from her back. You could put it right against her back. It really wouldn't matter. It's not, there's no heat. It's a flash. It's not going to burn her hair or anything, which would be unfortunate. Um, but there's a foot there. There's about a foot or so, a couple feet here. And that's pretty much the layout. Let's go ahead and turn the third light on. So to do that, I press the letter C. I press head. And now all three lights are on, the top, the bottom, and this backlight. Let's go ahead and take a shot here. Let me see if we're pretty much lined up. Here we go, nice. And let's see what we've got. Something didn't fire, but this is a great example. The top light, for whatever reason, didn't fire. I'll check and just do another test. But you see how the scary light is coming from underneath? That's why you don't want to underlight somebody. It looks scary. Let's test the top light, make sure it's on. Do a test, it should be. Everything fired, let's try that again. Here we go. I don't know why the first one didn't, but let's. Aha, I took two shots there instead of one, hang on. And I think maybe the one, there we go. This is the one before, let's let it draw on the screen. There we go. Look at the nice highlights coming around her sides of her face and her cheekbones and all. All this, let me just show you with my mouse. All this in here and right there and right here, and right there. It's all really, and look at right here on the neck and everything, it's really coming across nicely. So now, we pretty much have our light set. I've also, you notice how I'm composing the shot to where the top of her head is cut off? That's a very contemporary way. Uh, I wouldn't really normally show her whole head. Uh, for the beauty look, I did ask before she came here that she brought something uh, with bare shoulders, so that's why she's wearing the, the top she is, so it has that beauty look. So now that we have our lighting kind of nailed down, uh, the backlight I have turned up just powerful enough to where you see these lights, but without it blowing out. Also, if you let the backlight get too bright, it'll t it's going to sound like it. It'll tinge your hair. It's not going to hurt her, but in the shot, it's going to look kind of fried. So I don't want the backlight too powerful. I just want it to be solid white, and I want it to come forward to sculpt the cheekbones. All right, we are now ready to actually make shots. We've got the three lights set up. Let's go ahead and take a few. Here we go. All right, and you can feel free to use your hands or anything you like uh, on your face because there's a, there is a simple rule about, about using hands. Very nice. And the rule is... One second. The rule is try not to see open palms, right? 
our, our palms are just not very pretty. And I know mine look particularly good because I'm a hand model. But generally, you'll notice that she's doing closed hands and things. You no, don't normally see the hands turned forward because they're, they're not... They're not very appealing. And even here in the shot here, look how nice the light looks on the side of her cheekbones and stuff. That's, that's rocking. Here we go. I'm sorry I kind of interrupted your mojo there. Her mojo was, was interrupted. Oh, the box in the back is a five foot octa. Again, please don't get hung up on the size. It doesn't matter. If you have a square, if you have a four foot or whatever, it just has to be big enough when I'm zoomed in to cover behind her. So. And if you have any, any other questions, I would be happy to answer them while we're shooting. And now I can see her ponytail behind her head. And luckily, we have this thing called Photoshop. It's not a problem, Sue. I can, I can remove it. There's this program that we have. It's quite good. And none of my settings have changed. I'm still at F11. Uh, Focus-wise, I am moving my focus point directly on her eye. If you want this to be in sharp focus, that's focus point it has to be. So I'm, you'll see me moving it over here. Like I'll make sure, yeah, I am right on her eye. Now, if she changes her position, I'm just reaching over here to the rocker switch and we'll be, oh, that looks great. Fantastic, oh, I like that. That one is money right there, yes. Great. And now I'm moving, the, I'm moving it to the eye that's closest to the camera and then we fire. And that's great, I'm right on her eye. So I have one thumb on the rocker switch, the other thumb on my thing. And you can see the images that are coming in here. She's so good for this beauty headshot look, which is why I asked for Sue. Because she understands the posing. It is a very particular size of posing, style of posing that she's doing with her hands and stuff. And she's obviously a pro. And oh yeah, these are awesome. The only thing that I might change is I might lower uh, her skin tone. I might go to the saturation and just lower the vibrancy amount just a little bit in post, but there's really not much to do there. Everything else looks pretty good. The lighting is solid. And how far am I from her to answer? I'm about, what do you say, Julio? I'm about eight feet away from our subject? Ten. ten. So Julio's calling ten. Ten feet away from the subject. I want to make sure we've covered everything. I'm using a 70 to 200 as my lens. I prefer to be back far like this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I get to zoom in, which is very flattering. You use a long lens on somebody like this. It's very, very flattering. The look is great to them. Uh, and number two is I'm not right in front of her. Now, Sue's a professional model. She makes her living as a model. But uh, if I'm shooting a, a vice president or something and I'm way up here like this, that's very uncomfortable for most people. It wouldn't bother Sue because she's a professional. But if I'm shooting the vice president of marketing and I'm that close to him or her, they're not used to having a camera right in their face. This puts a nice space between you and your subject. Well, guys, we have to wrap things up here and we're gonna send it back to the set. I do wanna mention, um, I have classes that go in depth in this whole beauty headshot stuff. Uh, and plus I have done different lighting looks. They're called uh, lighting recipes. So go check them out on Kelby One. Also, if you're not a Kelby One member, today is the day besides Cyber Monday, which is coming back in November, right? This is our best lowest price ever. I've never, ever seen our price lower than it will be today. So I'd love it if you guys joined. We have over 800 classes, tons of classes on every aspect of lighting. I've done a bunch of them, but we also have other, don't trip over your, your tripod. Uh, we have a lot of other instructors uh, that are incredible, like Joe McNally and Frank Doerhoff, and so many people that are doing everything from wedding lighting to flash to studio lighting. We have tons, and it's one of, the, one of the things that we have the most of. So if you're interested in lighting, and if you just watch this, you probably are. I hope you'll do it. Uh, very thanks to Sue for helping us out. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be back in the studio with Larry and the crew. <laughs> My favorite thing about Photoshop World is just the atmosphere. The energy. The keynote. Networking. It's the inspiration.
Hi, I'm Richard Burnaby. Welcome to the beautiful Blue Ridge Parkway of North Carolina. We're gonna go on a photographic road tour, photographing waterfalls, sunrises, sunsets, grain landscapes, mountains. We're gonna talk about gear, we're gonna talk about camera settings, and most importantly, we're gonna talk about my thought process that goes into each of the compositions, the locations we visit. So I hope you check out my brand new class only on kelby1.com. Photography is a performance art. So that every time I go to a location now, I walk away with a storybook of not only the hero, but vignettes. I love little scenes. I love component parts that make up the whole. It's more than just using your eyes. It's listening. It's feeling, it's making choices and determinations that bring your point of view into your image. Be specific, make really strong choices, take a moment, and even when you think you have the shot, question yourself and say, is there more? And take it as far as you can. The more we do it this way, in a really present way, in a joyful way, in a loving way, and bringing you know, everything we have to the moment, the more it spreads into your image. Do you ever find yourself wanting to take amazing portfolio quality images, but feeling that the only way to get there is with a ton of gear and a huge production? Well, in this class I want to show you that that's not necessarily the case. We're going to walk around tonight with a group of friends. We're going to bring one camera, one lens, and one light, and I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to get amazing portfolio quality images with simple gear, simple setups, quick easy portrait sessions with people that aren't used to being in front of the camera. So join me for a night out with good friends and great photography in my new class exclusively on KelbyOne.com. Wasn't that a cool class to watch? I was standing over in the doorway while Scott's doing this class. Just amazing watching this all kind of come together and, and set up with the lights and just what a cool day. What a cool day, it's so much fun. We've got so many great deals for you. And you know what, this is all focused on Kelby One membership, the pro membership. The best deal of the year is right now. And so you'll see this training and you'll, you'll see us talking about Photoshop World and we're talking about classes and we've got tips and tricks and we're meeting some of the instructors that are at Photoshop World and some of the instructors that have classes on Kelby One and you're seeing screaming deals, like all this stuff that you can get for the best price of the year and all this is going on specifically for Kelby One members. If you've even been thinking about joining Kelby One, now is the time to join Kelby One. Best price of the year, today only. Today only, you've gotta sign up now. It's 149 instead of 199, the best price. So the deals that you hear us talk about, if you're watching this on the internet and you're going, well, how do I get that deal? you have to be a Kelby One member. And then once you're in on the official members website, that's where you'll see all the links to all of these different deals. And in fact, you'll even see a replay of this whole webcast if you want. We've got a webcast area specifically for members. So on the Kelby One website, if you've ever missed a webcast, and there are a lot of live webcasts just for members only. Sure, there's the grid that's available for everybody to see, but there are members only webcasts all the time. And these webcasts have special training, uh, special contests and things like that. And you can get to that on the members only website. That's just one of bunches of features that are there for Kelby One members. So great pricing, great deals. Today is the day to do it. It's a screaming deal and the audio people won't let me scream because uh, it will mess things up in the control room. Okay, so I wanna tell you about our next screaming deal. And it's from our friends at Westcott. This is a cool X-Drop 
backdrop. It's a, it's a background system, and the limit here is it's the first 100 people. So you, you can't get this deal if you're you know, taking your time to get around to it. It's 50 bucks off the X-Drop background system. The reason the X-Drop is so nice is it's incredibly, incredibly lightweight, easy to move around, and it just works really well. So there you can see, see that side angle? You can see this is like a pop-up style backdrop that you can put on this framework, but it breaks down. You see all those little joints there in, in the piece. And this is actually, you're seeing live footage. Oh, and a human, a live model right there on set. And uh, you can actually see what's going on. This backdrop is a beautiful backdrop. I'm sure we planned this gray on gray. <laughs> but, but what you can see is the backdrop is this really cool kind of felt. It's this light absorbing, so there's no reflectivity uh, bouncing back, back off. You can con control how the light hits it. It's this very, very nice backdrop, and the guys set it up here in, in probably two minutes when we received it from the people at Westcott. But my favorite thing about it is it breaks down nice and small, and then that backdrop fabric folds up into the little kit. It's like, it kind of looks like a, a light stand bag, something like that. So it folds up into this little kit, but you know you don't see any creases on that backdrop? Do you know why? We didn't iron it. We didn't pull it out and steam it. It's this stretch kind of capability. So the material kind of stretches and the backdrop itself framework allows for stretching. And I could pick it up with maybe three fingers. You know, just pick it up with, uh, with one hand, very easy, super lightweight. Very, very nice product there, $129.90. But what's nice is 50 bucks off for the first 100 people. That, uh, that go to the deal on the Kelby One website. So here's the deal, 50 bucks off the X-Drop background system for the first 100 people who claim this deal. Very, very nice uh, setup, and thank you to our friends at Westcott. They do more than lights. They do all kinds of different things, modifiers and backdrops. I have all kinds of cool stuff. Now. There's this guy that we occasionally ask if he can shoot photographs um, when we have a situation like this. So I'm gonna toss to a friend of mine that actually has a camera and is ready to do a photo shoot using this kind of uh, backdrop so that we can kind of demo what's going on with the Westcott backdrop. Uh, do we have the, that ready in the control room? Are we ready to go to um, the other photographer here? About ready? Okay. Maybe. Okay, so we're going there soon. We're trying to, trying to get all the, the gear in place and switch to the right camera. So we know that there is a need to switch cameras from me on set. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we're looking at our model on the backdrop. And in just a second, you're actually going to see a photographer working with this lovely model and the X drop backdrop. We ready? Yeah, yeah. Turn your body the other way towards, so you're towards the camera. Yeah. Oh, hey, <clears throat> hi, hi. <laughs> it's me, Scott. So we were, we were in here and, and I saw Sue up against that backdrop and I'm like, can't we just throw up a light and just shoot real quick? So that's what we did. So we threw everything back up, which we had torn it all down. That was kind of dumb. So um, I love these, ba these backdrops. They're really, you can really make them, um, kind of moody and, and so we're going in a completely different direction than we did with the other one where we were bright and happy. These are going to be real dramatic. I just took one test shot here and uh, the thing that I, I changed here on the test shot, so this is, I just set it up, literally we set it up, put it there and went click, um, is that we only have one light. So I had her turn her body towards the light. So now you'll also notice that we have Sue at the very back of the light. Take a look. Here's the center of the light. Look how far behind it Sue is. Sue is at the very back edge. Why would I put her way back at the very back edge? Because that's where the softest, most beautiful light is. Also, she's very close to the backdrop, so this light's doing double duty. It's going to light her and it's going to light the background. So really all I'm going to do now is let's, let's take a test shot now that I have turned her body towards the light. So turn your body towards the light and your head a little towards the light, but then look back towards me. You can turn your head a little bit. There we go. All right, let's, let's take a test shot. 
All right, we're dark and moody, so don't look happy. This is your thoughtful, your deep. Oh, but look at that. So what is so great? People ask me, why are people so in love with soft, big soft boxes? Because they're so easy. They're so forgiving. We didn't do anything to throw it up. We just set it up. It's not even aiming at her. It is aiming at that wall. It is aiming straight past her. She's only getting the light on the very edge. But look how nice and soft and creamy that light is. Right now, we're serious, we're thoughtful, and we're kind of miserable. All right, sorry, but that's probably not, not helping here. There we go. And the light is really, really soft now. If I want to make the light softer, all I have to do is take the light and push it in closer to her. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to have Julio just push it in closer. And we do recommend wheels. <laughs> Even closer, Julio. Let's fry her. I mean, let's make it really close and soft. All right, there we go. It is like right on her. Now, we just moved the light closer to her. So it's, it, it is softer, but it also just got a whole lot brighter. Just like if I took a flashlight and got closer to you, of course, it'd get brighter. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power down right now. I can turn it down by one stop increment, so I can go like down a full stop, or I can go down in 10th stop increments. I'm going to take it down a full stop because we, we got quite close. So press and hold, it goes down one stop. All right, here we go, same thing. And we're going to, there we go. Let's say, take a look, yeah. Look at how nice the quality of the light is. The light is really nice and really soft and it's like money and it's a completely different look than we did before. Now, if I wanna get a little more light on the background, I'm gonna have Julio just move it one step towards the background and then we're done. So Julio, can you move the light just a little closer towards the, because we're, we're getting a little bit of light on that background, but just a little bit more, just right there. Thank you. I just want to get a little, this is the last shot of the day, so even though I told you that like that was earlier, but that was just obviously a, a lie. But here we go. Let me get a little more of you in the shot here. All right, and that looks great right there. Let me just, actually, I'm going to take two shots too. <laughs> there we go. I was a little too far out. Here we go. And right there. And I did, I, I actually ha took two shots. The light wasn't fully recharged for the second shot. There you go. And I think it's still maybe a little too bright. I think I would take it down a little bit more. And let's just go down. I'm going to go a half a stop. Three, four, five tenths of a shot. Stop. I'm sorry? Oh, lights on C group. <laughs> Everyone's yelling something at me, and I'm like, why is that? I guess it helps if you press the letter C <clears throat> where that light is. Another great reason to have assistance, and, and everybody standing around me as a photographer, it helps when they start yelling, oh, C group, <coughs> C group. Here we go. That's a half a stop down. And that's better. All right, thank you, Sue. Thank you guys, and sorry to kind of butt in here. I wasn't really supposed to do this, but you know. All righty. So, thank you for doing that, Scott. We really appreciate the demo. It kind of helps to have a professional photographer in the studio showing off the uh, X drop. And again, you can get this deal by being a Kelby One member. Go to the Kelby One website and you'll be able to get access to that $50 off for the first 100 people that take advantage of this great deal. Now, it is time to join our next professional trainer. She teaches at Photoshop World. She has classes on Kelby One, and her name is Tracy Sweeney. And Tracy, I'm so excited to talk to you in person. Well, as close to in person as we get. <laughs> once, once I heard you were coming on and then I, I looked at all your work, I'm like, this is so cool because you know, I, I'm, I've been around for a few years and I've been in several family portraits. And then I looked at your family portraits and I'm like, this is next level. This is really cool stuff. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Well, it's morning here. <laughs> um, I'm really excited for Photoshop World this year. It's my second time around. So last year I was a newbie and now I'm coming back and I I'm just really, really excited. It's such an amazing experience. 
Well, you know, the reason that you get invited back is because people really, really like your stuff. One of the things that happens at Photoshop World is there are these um, uh, things where every attendee votes on, this was my favorite class, I really like this. They rate the classes, they put in comments, and those comments then determine what's gonna happen next time. Does the class come back? Does the instructor come back? You coming back means you were a hit last time. So I'm really looking forward to meeting you out at Photoshop World and taking your classes this time around. But you've got a few different things going on and for our Screaming Deals Day, you've got, uh, a, I think you've got a giveaway of some kind and you've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. Tell people a little bit about, please, what your class is gonna be at Photoshop World and then after that, let's talk a little bit about your class on Kelby One. So one thing that really stood out for me last year was I had a lot of um, attendees come up to me after my course and tell after my course at Photoshop World and tell me how much they loved my editing style. So last year I spoke about um, photographing families and I did a lot of um, demos, but I didn't go into any post-processing. So I took that feedback into account for this year as I was planning my courses and decided I was definitely going to infuse some editing into this year's instruction. And then another thing that really stood out for me was I had a wedding photographer stay after my course and um, tell me something that I just thought was really quite incredible. I had included um, an editing demo in one of my courses. It was the family photography course, and that's available on kelby1.com. And at the end, there is a gradient overlay that I use. And although I'm a family photographer, I don't shoot weddings, and he was a wedding photographer, he was telling me how using my editing style has completely reshaped his entire business, that he edited one image um, sort of nuanced with my, my style. And he said his inquiries, his bookings, like went skyrocket. So he was just so excited. And I thought, that's so cool. That feedback was just really uh, incredible for me. So I started thinking more about, again, how I could instruct at Photoshop World and really hit a lot of different genres, not just family photography, but also um, wedding portrait photographers, architectural photographers, um, landscape photographers, and kind of include some of my style that could possibly transcend, um, you know, beyond family photography. Then, of course, always uh, be included in family photography. So I'm teaching two courses this year, and the first is called Light It Up, and that's aligned with what I've been discussing, where it's going to be a demo with some simple techniques to really add like light magic into your photos. So if you follow my work, I'm all about these magical, bright, um, sort of saturated color imagery that really pops and stands out and definitely gets people to stop scrolling and say, wow, you know, I, I, I love this. That's always the hope. And I'm going to show you how to do that with some overlays, some blending modes, gradients, and more. I shoot in the Northeast and it is gray so much. So although I love having these beautiful golden hour images, it can't always happen because of mother nature. So I'll show you how I can fix all of that in Photoshop. So that's one of the courses and I've got a giveaway for you. Can you see me okay? I feel like I'm on a delay. Oh, you sound great, and you look great. You're very, you're perfect on camera. Oh, okay, perfect. So yes, these are the sky overlays I have for you for free today. So download them and use them and show me, please, how you're able to use them. There are just some different gradients, and you can use them at a variety of opacities. It's definitely to taste. I, I tell people that all the time, you know, if, if it's too increased for you, just down, um, reduce the opacity. But these skies are just really neat for being able to add that magical effect. I I also um, have seen people use these sky overlays again in um, different landscape uh, portraits. So if you're able to use these, please share with me. I, I always respond to anyone who messages me, whether it's on Instagram or on um, Facebook or by email, because I just, I. I'm an educator by nature. Um, if you know my bio, I, I, I taught for many years. So I just love being able to sort of disseminate that information and um, see how it works for you in your business. So that's one of the courses. <laughs> and then the other course is, of course, my, my heart, which is uh, family photography. And I think that what I've received in feedback as well, people get really overwhelmed when they're photographing a family with knowing what to do with that family because a family can have one child two children, three children, children of multiple ages, and thinking about how to pose 
that feeling can be overwhelming, especially for uh, new photographers or photographers who are just sort of tapping into the family industry. And I want to take all of that fear away in a really, really simple approach, which I call an unposing approach. It sounds like an oxymoron, but truly, it's an unposing approach to family photography to really be able to craft those beautiful, candid images that the families covet anyway, that don't feel overposed and that feel genuinely connected to the family's own natural vibe relationship and authenticity. So I'll be demonstrating that at Photoshop World, those emotive portraits and how I capture authenticity. I'm really looking forward to that because like I said, your, your family portraits are the opposite because we all have this picture in our head of when somebody says, oh, a family portrait. Yeah, we all know exactly what it is. Everybody's wearing a white shirt and a pair of blue jeans <laughs> and they're sitting on the little mound in the park and all looking in the same direction and there's the trees in the background and dappled lighting and, and that's the family portrait. I have one of those of my <laughs> family. Uh, so I, I really like this because I want to know not just looking at your family portraiture, which I have, but I want to know how do you get there? And that's going to be great to be able to access that at Photoshop World and be able to take that class from you. So thank you so much for all that you're sharing. You've got all kinds of uh, cool things. You've got the giveaways for members. And one thing that we didn't spend much time on is your Photoshop or your, um, your classes on Kelby One. So can you tell people a little bit what to expect when they get to Kelby One and they're looking for your classes? Absolutely. It's been a fun couple of years. I think I have five courses now in the database. So my, uh, I have a family, I have a, a lot of family photography, but I've broken it down too into different courses. So there's one on photographing siblings. There's another on um, my pro tips for photographing toddlers, that rambunctious group that uh, seems really scary, but they're so fun. I have another course on family photography um, and also newborns. I haven't mentioned newborns at all, but newborns for me are the foundation of my business because obviously the newborns grow, the families grow, and that turns into the family portraits. But essentially, my initial meeting with families is through their very special newborn session. And I have a master class on Kelby One uh, that was is a perfect, perfect start for anyone who's interested in newborns. And then I also have a course on business because that's another part of um, my business <laughs> that's important <laughs> is just thinking about these techniques to continue to cultivate business and build a really loyal clientele that keeps coming back to you year after year. That's the beauty of family photography is it's not just one and done session. It's not like a wedding, which hopefully doesn't, you know, turn into another. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that's such an important thing because so many of us have this passion. There are so many Kelby One members that are enthusiasts. And they want to know, how can, can I, oh, I can't turn this into a business. I don't know about marketing. I don't know how to do that. And uh, it's so nice that you and other instructors at Kelby One are willing to share the business side of your business and your insights. And every single time I take a business course on Kelby One, I'm learning new stuff that I haven't heard in my local marketplace because you guys are doing new cutting edge things. You've got the new look to your images, unique looks in your images, and then you've got a unique approach in your business. So thank you so much for sharing. That kind of stuff is really interesting to me as well. Tracy, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you out at Photoshop World. And thank you so much for your giveaway, for helping our members at Photoshop World, on Kelby One, all over the place. Tracy, anything else before we say goodbye for now and head to our next a commercial break. <laughs> no, I'm just ready for the countdown. It's it's almost here. I'm ready for your warm weather there in Florida, and I just can't wait to see everyone. So if there's any if any members or anyone considering going to Photoshop World has any questions, especially if you're new and have never been there before, that was me last year. So I know what you're feeling, and I'm just so excited for you. So please feel free to reach out, ask me any questions. I'm definitely here to ask uh, answer any anything you may have. And I just can't wait to see you all. Crazy Sweeney, thank you so much for spending time with us. We appreciate it. And we've got a quick break and we'll be back with more screaming deals and great instruction. You'll meet all kinds of extra people here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. See you in a minute.
the biggest photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom conference anywhere, and it's coming this summer to Orlando. It's the world's most famous instructors sharing their latest techniques. It's more than 80 classes on everything from landscape photography to portrait photography, from flash and studio lighting to the business side of things. It's live shoots, hands-on workshops, it's Photoshop classes, Lightroom classes, it's vendors with show specials, it's community, it's inspiration, and it's three days where you learn more than you have in three years. Go to photoshopworld.com right now to get your tickets. <laughs> I wonder why. Bring your cheek nice and close to hers. I know a lot of photographers are afraid to photograph siblings, but truly, it's almost easier in a sense. Siblings are comfortable with each other. They're responding to each other. They can feel safe with one another. They're doing this together. And I think in the end, if you make this an experience for them, it becomes more than just a session. It becomes a memory for them. Children are best, truly, when they have a bit of freedom. So if I'm asking siblings to do something, I'm doing that not because I have an exact image in mind, but instead just to give them an objective, just to give them some direction. But then from there, I truly want them just to be themselves. So if things unfold, I just keep shooting away. And in doing that, I really am going to capture their authenticity and their natural relationship, their bond. And that's the beauty about a sibling session. Truly, you're forging that moment in time. It all comes back to these photos because they're the ones that end up making it on the wall in their homes. They'll remember those images and those images become part of the narrative of their childhood. I'm Tracy Sweeney, owner of Alon Studio. Check out my latest course on kelbyone.com. Is there a lens I can get that's really gonna make a difference? Well, I can tell you my favorite one, an ultra wide angle. When you go really wide and you shoot from like a low perspective or a high perspective, or you put something important in the foreground, oh my gosh, you can make the most epic shots. I mean, they are night and day difference. You'll be like, this is incredible. And, and people are like, what's the secret? I'm gonna show you in my brand new class. I've got the Tamron, the brand new Tamron 15 to 30, incredible lens for the money so wide, so sharp, so beautiful. You're gonna love it, you're gonna learn a lot, but then we're gonna go on location in the Tampa Theater. It is historic 1926 classic movie theater and event location, tons to shoot. I'm gonna show you all my favorite techniques, all my favorite stuff. You're gonna learn it all and you're gonna be taking those giant, epic, cinematic shots. So come check out my new class on shooting ultra-wide lenses, the Tamron 15 to 30s, the new G2 version, and this class is only found one place, exclusively here at Kelby One. It's time to scream even more. We got more screaming deals. We got all kinds of cool stuff going on, educational stuff, behind the scenes information. We have giveaways. We have all kinds of things exclusively for Kelby One members. And you're going, but I'm not a Kelby One member. I'm watching this on the internet. I don't have exclusive access to Kelby One stuff yet. The reason that we're doing this is letting you know that there are so many cool benefits to being a part of Kelby One. And you can do that by joining Kelby One. This is the best price today. You will not find this price tomorrow. This is the best price for joining Kelby One at the professional member level. $149 instead of $199. It is a great savings. You get access to all kinds of savings and today's screaming deals and access to the contests and things like that. And I want you to pay attention to this next gentleman because he's going to be talking about pro photo lights. Um, and my guest right now is Chris Fain. Chris, tell me what your relationship is with pro photo. So I um, do a couple of different things with pro photo. So I run a weekly Facebook Live video program. Okay. So we do a little bit of stuff where I talk about you know, pro photo lights, yep. cool little lighting tips and tricks and stuff like that. And then I also do a lot of training, a lot of education uh, with dealers uh, and other people who just are, you know, learning the products and, and figuring out what it is they want. I try to, try to help them decipher um, 
kind of their needs and, and what it is that they're looking for. Okay, so you do you do a lot of work with Profoto as an evangelist. Correct. Okay, so you know the Profoto uh, product line, and um, the, we have we actually have. I want to bring up the graphic for the Profoto giveaway. So we've got a Profoto giveaway that is for the A1 and the Connect. So tell me a little bit about the A1 and the Connect. So the A1 is our first introduction uh, to the on-camera flash segment. Right. So, but we went, when we approached it, we wanted to approach it a little bit differently because we feel like a lot of people forever have just always done on-camera flash the exact same way. Yeah. So we wanted to take a lot of the things that we felt like on-camera flash companies were ignoring and fix those things. And one of the very first things that we wanted to tackle was quality of light. So if you look at the A1, for example, you'll, the very first thing that most people notice is the head's round. It's not rectangular anymore. And that's because we like that shape. That's, it's a shape that's naturally flattering. Yeah. You know, people are always trying to mimic the sun. The sun isn't a rectangle. Sure. So it's just one of those things that, that made the most sense to us. And the rest of our stuff, obviously, all of our lights are round. Uh, and so then, you know, on top of that, we wanted to tackle things like speed. And so we gave it insanely fast recycle speeds, and then we wanted to, to tackle battery life. So we gave it a lithium ion battery that's really quick to change out, get a ton of flashes off of it. Okay. And that's what we wanted to go that route. And then the Connect, which is the other thing that's, that's being offered in the giveaway, is uh, a new offering that we have at Profoto. It's, uh, we call it the button-free trigger because it's literally that. It has two, uh, three settings, actually. It has off, automatic, <laughs> And, and manual, so okay. you can literally uh, you can flip it to automatic and, and run TTL mode with uh, the five uh, camera brands that we support, which are Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, and Olympus. That's amazing. Yep, and so you have full TTL and full high speed sync uh, with any of our TTL enabled flashes. That's that could be the A1, the B10, the B1X. Wow. You no, know, all the way up to our Pro 10. So you have a you have a lot of control with it, which is it's, it's a beautiful little remote. Okay, so what's the uh, retail on the on the product? So if your retail on the A1 itself is uh, 999, okay. so it's right at a thousand dollars. Yeah, and then the Connect is 299, so it's all in like 1,300 bucks, pretty nice. Okay, cool. So that's actually part of this giveaway, and the way that you enter the giveaway is through Kelby One. I like it. Yeah, I like yeah. It. That, I I am definitely going to sign up for this because I have a, a speed light, but I need. I mean, this, this is just like so next level. And uh, it's not like I'm Scott Kelby, so I actually have to buy mine. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I work for the company. I buy mine. So. But what, a, what a cool product. It's, it's next level thinking. And the fact that it's compatible with... Um, with all the different exactly, so models. so in its current form right now with the A1, uh, yeah. it's going to be compatible with Canon and Nikon only, but uh, and, and then we have so uh, Sony coming really really soon. But what's really really cool is when you take our A1 off camera, whereas if you have a, a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony Speedlight, you're really married into that system. Yes. So, but if you take, say, a Nikon A1 off the camera and put it on a light stand, and I take my Fuji trigger and put it on, now I'm broadcasting full TTL and high-speed sync to something off camera because it, it wow. doesn't care anymore. That's, so that's we, we wanted to take the, the soul of a studio flash and put it in something that you could have on top of your camera. Very cool, very cool. Well, members can go to the live webcast page to enter the Profoto contest, and you just click on the Profoto link right there on the webcast, the live webcast page on the Kelby One member website. So one more reason to join Kelby One. You might be the A1 and uh, uh, Connect winner if I don't win it, because I'm going to enter. I don't know, am I even eligible? I don't know if I'm allowed to win. Usually, usually the rules stipulate <laughs> that you're, you're not allowed. I know, I know. All, all rules say Larry can't win this. Yeah, good news is I can't <laughs> enter it either, so that's what, two people out of the contest right what there. What a cool thing. Well, tell me a little bit more about, like, your podcast. Is it a free, it's a free yeah, podcast? Yeah, so, so we do it every single Friday. Um, I, I do one of them. Uh, yep. So I, I obviously work in the United States Division of Pro Photo. So on, we do it, uh, a, a multicast to, to Facebook and YouTube on Fridays at one o'clock. Okay. And it's re like I said, uh, when we come out with a one new product, one o'clock Eastern. One o'clock Eastern time. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm from Atlanta, so I okay. work on Eastern time. Um, but we really just try to tackle questions that photographers have. Like last week, uh, one of the things that I get calls on all the time is. Uh, 
like Chris, I'm having trouble breaking down the softbox. So it was literally, we did a video on, on what I find are like best practices to put a softbox together, break it down. Sure. And we try to get in real in depth in that when we launch new products, I really take you through a deep dive of what it's all about. And then if you know people are looking for, you know, they have any lighting questions. Like if you want me to cover broad lighting or short lighting, I try, I try to take everything I can from, from people who love to shoot, take photos. You don't have to be a pro photo user if you just like lighting and you yeah. want to learn some cool stuff. It's not always pro photo centric, but it's just something that we like to offer What's out. What's your to, background to be able to do all this? Uh, I have a really, really weird background <laughs> into, into photography. I was actually, uh, I started as a musician, became a recording engineer and then moved over into uh, television, worked okay. in sound and television for a whole bunch of years for Tyler Perry. And in that time, I kind of picked up a camera, fell in love with it. And then uh, from then on, I actually spent about four years um, as Peter Hurley's associate in his studio in New York. He and, I, cool. he and I met and became really good friends. He invited me to work with him. And then from there, it just kind of launched. I wanted to learn a lot more about lighting. So I was like, and the, the guy I knew to learn it from, his name's Cliff Hausner. He's the, he's the New York guy. Okay. Um, and I was like, I just need to be around Cliff as much as possible. And that's what got me into Pro Photo. And, and Interesting. my lighting love, is constantly growing. Yeah, Peter Hurley's not a bad guy to learn from. I he's, learned, he's okay. I have learned an awful lot he's from okay. him. So, very cool. Make sure that you uh, sign up to become a Kelby One member. And if you're already a Kelby One member, sign up for the Pro Photo Giveaway. It's right there on the webcast page for members only. Thank you so much for joining us. This we was a blast. I appreciate on. it. Thank you so much. Cool to have that kind of contest. And we have we have so much more great stuff. Now, one of the things that we have is a, a video tutorial from a Kelby One who, this guy has been a long time Kelby One member, and then he became a Kelby One instructor. And his name is Mark Heaps, and good friend, and I follow him on social media, and you gotta check out this video. Hey everybody out there, this is Mark Heaps at Life by Pixels, and I'm gonna be sharing a tip for all the Kelby One users out there today. And this tip was inspired by a conversation between Scott Kelby and Eric over there on The Grid Live um, from Kelby One. They were talking about sky replacing, which is a touchy subject I know, but it's probably one of the most basic forms of compositing people learn how to do. So here I've got a landscape image of the Sierras. I've already got a mask in here, which is knocking out that sky for us. And I've already found a sky image that I want to use to replace the sky with. A little bit more dramatic, some clouds, a little bit more fun. The tip I'm sharing today is how to add a little extra quality to that composite. And let's talk about why. If we zoom into the original image here, one thing you'll notice in all photographs is at the edges, there's always a little bit of texture crossing over between two edges, right? Contrasted lines here. You can see all of these little artifacts. These are from the photo sites of your camera, extra bit depth, extra resolution, all equals up to extra quality. But when people cut this out, we lose all of that. We lose all of that nice edging. It looks like it was cut out with an X-Acto knife, and this is how we know a composite looks really, really fake, especially when someone prints it out. So how do we improve the quality of that? Well, there's a really old filter that I use for all of my projects, and if we look at the layer mask here, you'll be able to see it much more clearly. Now there is some variance along the edge here. This is coming from anti-aliasing with the selection that was made, but that's not enough. What we really wanna do is with our layer mask selected, come up to filter, go down to stylize and choose diffuse. And in here you'll see it adds extra texture along the edge. Now this is sort of like adding noise, but it's not doing it to the main bodies of the mask. It's specifically looking for an edge that it can apply this diffusion to. Now if you choose darken only, it's gonna push that diffusion from the dark parts of the mask into the lighter areas, darkening the lighter areas up. If you choose lighten, it does the opposite, pushing a lighter portion of the mask into the darker areas. And Anisotropic will actually smooth this out and give you kind of a blurred effect. For this particular demo, what I typically do is use darken only. Adds a little texture, we'll press okay. Now, that's not necessarily enough for me. It's done a nice job, right? It's created a little bit of texture in here, so we're seeing some of that green chroma in the background push into the details of the mountain. But that's not entirely what I want. We don't want this crispy, chunky sort of edge. So I'm just gonna put a tiny amount of blur on that actual diffusion. So we'll go up to filter, 
come down to blur and we'll choose Gaussian blur. Now, I'm going to use a very low value here, about 0.5 of a pixel, just enough to diffuse some of that edge. Now, press OK. And let's bring in our sky image. OK, it's blending pretty well here. But one of the problems is if I zoom back in, you can see there's sort of a boundary line going along my mountainscape. And because we've blurred this, we're getting various little sort of trace contour edges on the mountain. So my extra tip for you today is with that layer mask still selected, we're going to go up to image, come down to adjustments and choose levels. And what this will allow us to do is adjust the contrast around that diffusion that's along the edge. Now we don't want to use the low key or the high key. That's going to push those tones to white or black. But the gamma slider that's right here in the middle will allow us to blend that to a darker or lighter shade of gray, in essence, moving the edge. And the diffusion has added texture to that to help this process. So if I just move this to the right and darken that edge a little bit, you can see the picture in the background. That blue boundary line has gone away. If I was to move to the left, it would really become pronounced. So we move to the right, darken it up. It blends the edge back in nice and clean. Press OK. And now I know I have a much more believable edge up close when I print this image of my composite. All right, guys, there you go. There's my five minute tip or less. Uh, for all the Kelby One users out there, as always, I'm Mark Heaps at Life by Pixels. Follow me online, and I hope to see you guys somewhere at Kelby One real soon. <laughs>
But you know what? When you, when you buy a lens like this, oh, there it is. How to make great shot. Oh, come on, wait a minute, look. Oh, how to make a great shot. Okay, I thought it said how to make great shot. I'm like, where's the A? There it is. How to make a great shot with the ultra with an ultra wide lens. And in this case, I use the Tamron 50 to 30. But uh, really, th this is an absolute beauty of a lens. Also, just to give Tamron a shout out. Now, oh, by the way, I, gotta, I do have to give you my disclaimer. They are the, uh, the sponsors of our TV show, The Grid. That's not why I'm saying this, but they are our sponsor, but just to let you know. But um, they did something recently. They changed the look of their lenses. Yeah. They are the, I think, at least as good looking as any lens out there. Like it has, they have kind of like a, a, it's not a gloss finish. Right. It's not a matte finish. It's like a semi-gloss. And they're beautiful. They've, they've done that right. So naming, bad, lens design, good. I like it. And uh, yeah, and it kind of takes nice images too. It takes beautiful and it's <laughs> super sharp. Yeah, it's like really, really nice. So 50 bucks, 50 bucks is good. I remember back in the day when uh, you always had to get the brand of your camera, the lens for the brand of your yeah, camera. Yeah, you had to buy a Nikon was, camera and a Nikon lens. Because otherwise you'd get nothing. And now, I mean. Oh, the, the, the third party lens quality has come up dramatically. Yeah, like, like I, I would love to have this lens. I, I was only able to borrow it. <laughs> Eric still has one. I yeah. was only able to borrow it. But uh, so Tamron, if you're listening, give me a deal. More than fifty bucks off. <laughs> All right. So we have we have um, another dial in. Uh, wait, we're joining somebody far away via Skype. Okay, he's not that far away. Okay, we're joining somebody who's not in two this hours city. and a half away. Yes, we could drive and go hang out with him. Yeah, there he is. He's, he's like at every <laughs> single Photoshop world ever. So we're going to hey, be talking. Hey, I met him at the first Photoshop world in 1999. That's how long I've known Vanelli. Vanelli is, true story, 112 years old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm not 112. <laughs> Vanelli, Vanelli is known by so many people because Vanelli has mastered the skill. Now, he's got a lot of skills. He's a great photography instructor. He's a writer. He writes like crazy. I, follow, I don't even know how you fill up my Facebook feed so much. with <laughs> Like every other post hey, is Vanelli. He, but, he's also, don't forget, he is like a master of martial arts. Yes. Martial arts school instructor. He's got more black belts than I have black t-shirts. That's <laughs> he's, unbelievable. He's got many, there's many facets. He's like an onion. You peel back a layer and there's just another one under it. But wait, wait, you calling me Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, the thing that I always associated with Vanelli very first was his ability to network and be friends with people and put people together. And so this is why so many people at Photoshop World know my friend Vanelli is because he connects with all kinds of people. You know, like he'll meet you at Photoshop World and go, Oh, you're a, a pet photographer? You live in Kansas City? Okay, well, have you met Karen? And they'll like walk over and go, she's looking for a pet photographer, she's in the ad agency business, and she's like connects people all the so time. So you know what though, he's, he's like a cruise director. <laughs> like, but, but can I say this about Vanelli? He, he, he doesn't have a master plan. Right. He just loves everybody. Yes. He's just a people person. He loves everybody, and he, he loves getting people together. Yes. He like, because then you become one of Vanelli's friends. Vanelli has 1.2 million friends. These and, they're, people, and they're personal. These, these are not people that follow him on social media. Right. These are people he can call on the phone, 1.2 million certified phone numbers. <laughs> but uh, anyway, V, v is a, has been a friend of ours for many years. Good to have you here, V. Hey, thank you guys so much for all the kind words. It's real stuff. And oh, you can tell from the, from the background behind him, he is in a holding cell <laughs> in the Osceola County Jail. But uh, visiting hours are right now, so we got to pop in there. So good to see you. Vanelli, that's hey. an easy question. Listen. You are excited that Scott Kelby is hosting not one, but two Photoshop worlds this year. Uh, that came from Alexa. <laughs> Alexa wanted to say hi. Hi, Alexa. <laughs> I pronounced that hi. But see? All right, slow down. <laughs> How you doing, V? You're super good. I'm really excited to be um, teaching this year at Photoshop World. We're excited to have you teaching. So, but, but say what you're teaching at Photoshop World. What's Actually, we have two, two classes. <clears throat> one class, I'll still do my 3 2 one backup plan for photographers, showing people how to backup I mean, their precious memories. 
And it's amazing on how many photographers actually don't have a backup plan. So I'll teach the three, two, one concept, three copies of your data, two stored locally and one stored off site. Yeah. And then I'll show, um, you know, a good way, the better way, and then the best way. And each one of them will have a, um, you know, an affordable solution to where if you want to go all out, a very expensive solution. Hey, so V, isn't it interesting that when you talk to photographers, even professional photographers, and you ask them the question, so are you fully backed up? The yeah. answer is normally, I, I'm, I'm pretty backed up. I, I have most of my stuff. You, rarely do you run into somebody that says, oh yeah, I, I've got the three, two, one plan. I'm fully backed up. Most photographers, even working pros, are, are at that stage where they're like, mostly, you can tell when they tell you they're lying. They're like, uh, kind of, yeah. probably you're like, just just do it. Go, go back up your stuff. Yeah, or, yeah, or what's worse, Scott, is some of them actually say, oh, I have six backups of those. Well, wait a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're not following three, two, one, three copies, two local, one off site, then you have too many backups. And that gets confusing. Yeah, now, I've been there before to where you know, I had multiple backups on so many different drives that you forget which one is the current one, which one's the bad one, and so on. So if you follow that three to one, in fact, my Lightroom took a dive the other day. Huh. And my my um, catalog got totally corrupt. Okay, no problem. I went to my second backup drive, which I have it right here in the studio. Well, guess what? It copied that corrupt drive, oh. that corrupt one, to that one. No problem. So I went to Basecamp, not Basecamp, um, Crash Plan online, and I went back, and guess what? That one, the first one, was corrupt too. Because Crash Plan keeps multiple backups of all of your um, your images for, I, I think, I know Backblaze does it for 30 days. Crash Plan does how many you want. So I have mine set to like 60. So I just went back in time, found the one that wasn't corrupted, and I was back in, back up and running in no time. So Good job. I found it ironic it happened just before Photoshop World. It is ironic just before your class. How yes. convenient. You should teach a class on this. You should teach you a should, class. You should have a giveaway about tools just for this kind of backup <laughs> <Yes>. strategy. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Vanelli. You got a free ebook. <laughs> yeah, right. that was good. All okay, right. well, tell me about the ebook. Okay, so in the ebook, it's a combination of all the articles I've written over the years on 3 to 1 backup. And then I just went through, I compiled them to where people actually can just download the ebook and they have all the information at their fingertips. So they don't have an excuse that, oh, I didn't know. I'm giving them the, the knowledge. And a couple things, uh, like I'm, I'm a Drobo ambassador, so full disclosure on that. But at the last Photoshop World, I was at the Drobo booth and uh, one of their main people looked at me and said, wow, Vanelli, you're, you're the first ambassador that we've had that talked people out of buying our product. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, because a, a person came up to me and said, I want to buy two Drobos like you said. All I said was, how many terabytes of data do you have? He goes, oh, well, I just started photography. I'm already up to one full terabyte. Ooh. And I said, okay, so you've been shooting for a full year. Yes, you have one terabyte. So let's just assume you double that next year, you're up to three terabytes. And then the following year, let's just say you're up to four terabytes. And then the following year, you're up to five. You don't need a Drobo yet until you're at about eight terabytes in. So just go to, you know, B&H Photo and just buy a $100 uh, six terabyte external drive, two of them. And now there's your three to one backup. And then when you're ready, take those hard drives out of the enclosure and then you just repurpose those into a Drobo and you're good to go. All right. So, well, yeah. Well, V, there's two but, things. The two things there is, is the Drobo doesn't just back up your, your stuff because it, it is a robotic, what would you call it, gatekeeper. It looks at your drives, it monitors the health of your drives, and if it sees a problem, even if it just has one terabyte, it will take that information and move it. By the way, 
full disclosure, I am not a Drobo ambassador. <laughs> I, I'm just a guy. But I use Drobo. I have Drobos. And uh, in fact, I just got a brand new 8-bay Drobo on my desk. Oh. But one of the things that makes Drobo great is its roboticness. The other thing, V, and this is important, is that you need a math tutor. If you have one terabyte and you double that over the next year, it doesn't go to three. No, no, I said if you shot, I said if you were shooting two more terabytes. I'm just messing with you. I'm just totally yeah. messing with you. <laughs> no, if, if they you, increase the amount of shooting they're doing. It's what I do. It's what I do, V. Oh my God. I followed, Sister I Natalie, followed your my example. Grade Vanelli, I math understood. She's probably upset with me right now. I cannot believe oh. you can remember the name of your fifth grade. Oh my God. Oh God, I knew all of them. I just They're remembered. The I just remembered my fifth grade math teacher's name. What Miss, is it? Mrs. Mimic. See? I can't believe that. It just popped in my head at that moment. You know, it, I, I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to her on Facebook and have a little have a little chat with her about you. Yeah. Scott's backup drive just kicked in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, all right. I, w I was in fifth grade, so this was 22 years ago. <laughs> right? Okay, your oh, math oh. is off now, right? dude. My math? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, V, your free book, yes. ebook that you're giving our members is Building a Bulletproof Plan for Photographers, uh, uh, for photographers Backup System. And Kelby yes. One Pro members, you can claim that in the toolkit. So it is there for you now. You can go and grab it. And thank you for making that available for our members, V. That's very kind of you. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you at Photoshop World. It wouldn't be Photoshop thank World without you. Oh, thank you. And now take, you. A, take a good look at his, at his face here. And when you're at Photoshop World, if you want to make Vanelli's day, just come up and go, hi, I'm kind of new here. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Who should, I, who should I know? And you will meet so many people. You will have so many friends. You will, you will not be alone for another moment the entire Photoshop World Conference because V, he's, a, he's about putting people together. And I don't mean that well, in a and, dating way. Well, I mean in a friendly, yeah. well, friendly th way. This year, Scott, this year, Scott, I actually, um, I'm bringing a team with me. And I have several of my team, my, my team members coming. And um, you, you remember Kim and Ray, those two kind of took over where I left off um, years ago, where they're going around because I'm so busy now at Photoshop World. You know, I have time to meet with a bunch of people, but they actually go down to Midnight Madness where they're giving out the tickets. They'll get there at 5 a.m. and sit with everyone and do the stuff that I used to do with them. They connect people together. And then at the end of Midnight Madness, as you know, we go out to breakfast and we just share tips and tricks with each other. Um, at that time, like at midnight. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of my my guys um, and girls there helping out with a bunch of people that are first time attendees. Yeah, you guys Very are cool. awesome. Very cool. Thanks for doing that, Vanelli. Hey, hey, there is one thing we have to do in Orlando. I know we got a wrap here, but there is one thing we have to do. So it is a tradition after Midnight Madness. We end it at midnight. By the way, we used to start it at midnight. That was crazy. <laughs> and as we got older, it became 11 p.m. Mad madness, <laughs> 10 p.m. It's probably going to be called early bird madness soon. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, it is a tradition of ours after the, after the thing to go to get burgers. So we go get burgers at, by the time we get there, 1230 or 1. In Las Vegas, we go to In-N-Out Burger. Right. We go to the one right behind the New York, New York. In Orlando, this is an issue. V, where are we going to go in Orlando? We have not found a good place for burgers that's open at one in the morning it's in Orlando. It's funny you're saying that because I put my, um, what's what I'm looking at? Looking at uh, my friends. I asked my friends to research this and to strongly suggest to a few people that they stay open a little bit later for us. <laughs> so I'm hoping we'll have a good place that's within walking distance or even inside the hotel that we can go to. So Vanelli has 1.2 million people on this case. That's awesome. <laughs> well, V, uh, thank you for, for joining us uh, here today, and thank you for teaching at Photoshop World and for making that great ebook available. Uh, backing up is critically important, and you are, you are an authority on staying backed up, so thank you very much for doing that. You know, it's funny that thank you pointed you out that Vanelli's like, tied into all these different things because he's tied into you know, the, the training and then the backup stuff. And Tinder. And, and <laughs> it'll be at Photoshop World. And he's also... An instructor and uh, evangelist for Skylum. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, and, you that make yeah, Luminar. We're on the educational development team. Okay, so on the yeah. educational development team, and I am on the Skylum promo team right now because that's our next deal. Vanelli, thanks for joining <laughs> us, and we're going to jump into the Skylum deal. All right, so here we go. See you guys. See you, V. See you, V. So the Skylum deal is that we have the Skylum software. Now, they, they produce actually a couple of different products from the Skylum Luminar uh, family group. And it's Luminar and Aurora HDR. That's good. And there are, yeah, it is such great HDR and really good control. It's become like the HDR tool that everybody uses. Because it used to be, uh, what was it? Uh, what was the one? Photomatics? That's what people yeah. used to use? Yeah, everybody moved over to, to uh, Aurora. Yeah, to Aurora, yeah. Aurora HDR. So there are, there are actually a few different deals. And it's, it's which bundle you decide that you want to go with because of Skylum being the parent software company. They have Aurora HDR plus a bunch of bonuses worth $90. And you can find out what all those are by going on to the Kelby One website. And then find out, you know, follow the link to the Skylum deal. We've got uh, Luminar 3 Signature Edition for $49 bucks, or the Creative Pro Edition, Luminar 3 plus Aurora HDR for $119. Those are really good deals. Yeah, it really is. And th these are just such great ways. What people need to understand is that Luminar allows you, you know, just kind of almost like one touch post-processing. You take your images in there and it's just move a couple sliders and, and you've got these great finished images. Yeah, but you know what too? They've got some things in there that are, are in no other program. So can I tell you my favorite? Please. They've got a filter in there. Now, they have, they've got a really, really, really good sky filter. They've got a filter that makes your skies look great that is fairly new, and it's, it's pretty awesome. And by the way, I'm not a, a Skylum ambassador, so Skylum. Sky Skylum? Skylum Luminar. Oh, trivia. Ready for this? <laughs> so, the, so they used to be called Mac Fun. Right. And they actually hired the company that does the naming for Tamron's lenses to come up with a name for... <laughs> For them, and it's Skylum. <clears throat> anyway, so but so so they have a really great sky filter. Their sky filter is probably the best anywhere. But they also this is going to sound crazy, but it's so well done. They have a a panel that does um, what would you call them? Uh, sun rays, rays of light, okay. beams of light. It's beams of light and rays of light. Look at this. Look at this. Watch this. I don't know who's in our control room. Is it Jason? He's on the ball. Anyway, let me tell you, there, there's the sky enhancer, the accent, the sun rays, that's the one. It's called sun rays. But what's amazing about it was it, it sees like what, what's in the, and it makes the mask. Like if you want to come through tree. Cool. And, and, but it's got a lot, you can say randomize it. I want more sprites. I want less, you know, number of rays. It, it is so advanced and so good. I mean, they're, you know, it is now, they just came out recently too with a plug-in version. If you want to run it just from, uh, Lightroom or just from Photoshop and you don't need to have a standalone version, you can do that as well. I use it as a plug-in. Uh, I use it as a plug-in for Lightroom or for Photoshop. These deals are great and Luminar 3, uh, honestly, it's, it's awesome. Everybody should have it. Very cool. So everybody needs to be a Kelby One member. There's more than just the best learning about Photoshop and photography and Lightroom on the planet. There's so much more to Kelby One membership than what you think of, when you think of Kelby One membership, you think of these world-class photographers and designers being trainers. But there's so much more. And discounts, the screaming deals today, that's, screaming. that's why we're doing this, is to get the word out twice a year now, Cyber Monday and yep. today. You can get the best deal ever, ever, ever on Kelby One membership. Yeah, I've never seen it lower than that ever except for Cyber, it, not lower, that same price on Cyber. Yeah, this is the best deal of the year. So $149, and that gets you all these great discounts. You get to enter the contest for the Tamron You get Benelli's home phone number. Yeah, but everybody has Benelli's home phone number. That's pretty point. much. 1. Well, $1.2 million. million. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> hey, was I talking really loud when I had these headphones on? No, the headphones were for the... Um, for me to hear Benelli. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you, you sounded... I felt like I was roaring. No, you sounded normal. I felt like I was Aurora. Aurora... Aurora HDR. See how I, that's a segue. That's in, in professional webcasting, which this, by the way, is not. That's called segue. 
Segway. So that's where you smoothly transition, like We're if I two were, wheels. Yeah. like if I were to go from the Skyland thing that we just did to say Rocky Nook, because we have a Rocky Nook. Rocky deal. Nook. I love these guys. They they publish my books. So right? Rocky Nook is a publisher. They are. They are a book publisher, and they are the ones. So I just I have a new book. It's coming out in a couple of days. The Kindle version's out, but you can get the print version, obviously for fifty percent off. Um, it is. Um, well, there's the, there's the code at checkout. But yeah, I've got the flash book, but my new one is called the Landscape Photography Book. And it is coming out like any day. It's on Kindle now. But uh, they also have my book, The Flash Book, and my book called How, Did, How Do I Do That in Lightroom? Also my book, How Do I Do That in Photoshop? I wish I could get all these at half price. Well, you can if you do it today, Larry. You can only get it, today? Only, yeah, it's only today, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only, today, only today, but it's 50% off all my books. That's pretty good. And so I, I need to sign up for a membership. I mean, it's cheaper than Amazon, and Amazon's really a great price, but that's like 50% off is kind of unheard of. 50% off any Rocky Nook book all day Yeah, long. not just my books, right? Anybody's books. Yeah, any Rocky Nook book. Which it should be only just my books, right? Well, they're no. where all your books are. <laughs> yeah. Get that one right there. There you go. <laughs> Flash book. Yeah. Flash. It's going to be gone in a... Oh... <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry, oh, oh, uh, but this is such a cool thing. So if you're if you're an enthusiast into photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, you know, Kelby One membership is a no-brainer. Well, it's a big brainer. It's a big brainer. It's a big brainer. Yeah, because it makes you smarter. Hey, do you know who we have uh, that's going to be joining us next? I do. Is she awesome? She is amazing. Is she incredible? Uh, phenomenal. Ridiculous artist. Atlanta, Atlanta based. Photoshop world instructor. <laughs> Who won't stop laughing to start talking. <laughs> I think we caught her off guard. She also has the world's largest dog. Yes. Lisa, Lisa yes. is larger than she is. Mm -hmm. That's their dog is very, very large. And it is, uh, it's an attack dog. It's a killer. No, it's a friendly <laughs> dog. Uh, it's the most friendly I've ever been with a dog. So the first time I met Lisa at, at Victoria's house, Lisa came and threw her paws up on me. She's a puppy, and she's taller than me. And I was like, wow, and I opened my mouth. Huge mistake, because Lisa <laughs> shot her tongue into my mouth. I French kissed a dog. And uh, it was uh, surprising. It was uh, very un unexpected to be making out with a dog that day. But Lisa is a joy, and not, not to say anything about Lisa, but Victoria is one of my favorite people great artist and we're excited to have her teaching at Photoshop World. Uh, she taught at the last one. Yes. And uh, her class, w w we had to do it twice. We had to do her class. It was so full that we actually went and got a classroom and had her teach it again. And so we're excited to have her back. There she is, Victoria Pavlov, the awesome, the wonderful. I want to put my headphones on so we can hear her. One of the things that I, I really <laughs> like about Victoria's work is that she's, she's an artist who uses the digital medium. She uses the traditional medium so she's an artist in the digital and the real world using just any kind of technology that you need. So actual paint and digital paint. And she orders her steaks medium. Okay, well, I didn't know that. But, but, the, other, but the other thing is she's got this serious different level of styles of her artwork. So she's got photorealistic painting. These are, folks, these are not photographs where she's brushed over it with a stylus. These are from scratch, from nothing, from pencil sketches to the finished image, and it looks photorealistic, and it pops off the page to, um, she does different styles that are almost impressionistic looking and, and every place in between. And what I like about following uh, Victoria online is watching some of these pieces come together. So she'll say, here's a sketch, and I'm going to be doing this in the next day or so. And then, then the painting starts to come together. And I, I don't want to give your whole program for you, Victoria. I want you to talk a little bit about what you're doing. So it's so wonderful to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, guys. I love you, Kilby <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Are you going to let Lisa run around while we're doing this? Or are you going to... uh, Lisa runs around. She actually sick a little bit for the last three days, so she's not Aww. best Lisa for now. Aww. That's Lisa right behind her head. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah, this side. <laughs> <laughs> I painted her when she was only three months old. 
So Aww. it's old Lisa. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for. So I heard so much nice uh, thing you told about me uh, about my uh, painting. Uh, I have two ways of painting. I have a uh, painting from scratch and also I have painting for photographers. Uh, painting for photographers, um, actually, um, I think um, photographers more appreciate the way to paint because not everyone um, born with a ability to paint but everybody wants to paint it's like everyone loves to uh, sing and even if we are not singers we are trying to uh, sing karaoke so it's the same way but these um, painting for photographers you basically can take any picture you took uh, it doesn't matter if it's a wedding or still life or pet and you can uh, transforms this image to a real painting. It's not uh, actions, it's not filters, it's uh, brush by brush, uh, brush stroke by brush stroke. So it's uh, like, uh, I don't want to say real painting because it is a real painting, but more for photographer. And there are a lot of photographers that are interested in that style. I can't paint anything. I, I, I can't draw a stick man. But... You can. Well, I would, I would have to start with a photograph, but this opens up this artistic style to so many people that can't paint. So I think it's kind of cool what you're doing in that aspect. Thank you. And with painting for photographers, using same brush, but with different settings of your same brush, you can um, apply different uh, painting technique. Uh, it's completely different. Example, if I will use same brush, I will uh, apply I don't know, elegant technique, you, Scott, can uh, use same brush and you can apply completely different technique and you will have completely different uh, image using same photo. And this is a beauty of uh, painting for photographer. Now, I noticed that you have a little bit of an accent. Are you from Texas? Is it Texas I'm, I'm detecting? It I'm is very close. Very close. I'm <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> no, I'm from Armenia, part of Soviet Union. Well, we're glad to have you uh, on on uh, the, on our side of the ocean, and uh, you. so you're giving away some from some digital backgrounds. Yes, I'm giving away my digital uh, background for uh, mobile and desktop workflow. So I have um, um, I, I think about ten or fifteen uh, backgrounds for mobile workflow. You can use any mobile application such as uh, I don't know. Photoshop sketch or Illustrator draw and um, use uh, those background as your uh, background or you can use Photoshop or Illustrator. Well, so it's you. up to you. Thank you for doing that, Victoria. That's very kind. It's, it's in our toolkit. Thank it's you. my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Larry. So, uh, so Victoria, at Photoshop World, what, what are the titles of the classes you're teaching this time around? First class I will be teaching is uh, Introduction to Digital Painting. I will teach how you can start uh, your uh, painting workflow for photographers and for anyone who wants or can uh, paint. It will be from, uh, we can um, uh, use a technique, a photo technique as your uh, background layer or a simple white background. It will be your basic layer and I will show to you how you can uh, organize your workflow from a brush uh, preset organization, uh, how you can use different type of uh, brushes to create a different type of painting. And uh, if you um, want to paint from scratch, I will show to you how you can start. You can start from a white background or you can uh, bring your sketch from a um, piece of paper or from uh, Adobe mobile application. Okay. And in a, another class will be fantasy photo manipulation in Adobe Photoshop. CC, we will create very beautiful. Um, I plan to have two images from scratch. And we will create very beautiful fantasy image. And also I have um, um, tournaments presentation um, of Photoshop on iPad at Adobe Booth. Okay, so you're, you're actually teaching Photoshop on iPad at um, Photoshop World. Is that going to be in one of the classes or is that in the trade show? Uh, trade show. Wow. 
Wow. Very good. And you and you also happen to have classes on Kelby One, right? I hope. I hope. Yeah, yeah. She's, we're, work, we're working on that right now. She's going to be coming and doing some classes on digital painting. Yeah, I thought yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. But, yeah. but only Kelby One members can actually access those classes. That is true. We have over 800 classes, and Victoria's will be uh, one of our new ones. Dave Black is here today taping more classes for us. Yeah. Uh, I've got some more classes coming out. A lot of people have classes. Uh, and anytime a new big camera comes out, Larry has a class. Right. Larry's our camera guy. And so, uh, so anyway... Uh, yeah, if you're a Kelby One member, today's the day to join. Whether or not. Kelby, about Kelby One story, when I just came to the United States, I had no English. It was problematic to communicate with people and everything. And somebody from uh, people I knew, she gave me a link to uh, Kelby One, NAP. And I uh, bought a membership. And from that time, my life in the United States completely changed. I had uh, and have my friends and everything. It's Kelby One. I have personal attachment to Kelby One. It's amazing. Guys, it's a really, really amazing place to be every day. Well, thank who, you, Victoria. Who knew that the classes at Kelby One were English for people who don't speak English? <laughs> That's awesome. Speak, I don't, no, 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 Larry. I will explain why. Because every... Everywhere else, if you will speak with accent or something, people will point you on that you have accent. Kelby One community, not community, completely different. Yeah. It's, it's a family. It is. It's and we're, different. And we're honored to have you a part of it. We're so glad you're teaching at Photoshop World. And I'm looking <laughs> forward to getting you down here for your class uh, on digital painting, because I know that we thank have a you. lot of people that would love that. So thank you for making thank those you. free digital backgrounds available. Those are from Victoria. You are awesome. And, Thank uh, you. Right back to you, guys. And I, I hope that Lisa feels better soon. <laughs> Me too. We have appointments with her vet, so yeah. And tell her I miss making out with her, <laughs> and that I, I hope to make out with her again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye. She's the best. She is. I love her. She is, she's got such great enthusiasm. And I can't tell you how well her class went over at Photoshop World. Yeah. I'm not kidding. How, I cannot remember the last time where we had to repeat a class. So her I class, know. Her class was on the show floor theater, and it was so packed, and there were so many people there, and people were going, it was, it was just crazy. And Is there any way we can see her again? And we did. We found a classroom. We put her in it, and it was packed. Because she, she's teaching stuff that's very unique, and, and she's just a, a doll. She's just a joy in person. She's so full of passion for what she, for what she teaches. And it, that's, it's always fun when you're, when you're around someone who loves what they do and they're passionate about it. Uh, she's just awesome. I agree. And, and her, her dog is very affectionate. <laughs> I don't dog, know if I mentioned that. You and her dog, that's just, that's just going to haunt me for a little while. We're going to take a short break. Stick around. We're, uh, we're going to be wrapping things up before long, but... Certainly not until after, after this break. I've been here four times. I continue to learn new and fabulous things about photography and Photoshop and Lightroom. If you come here with one thing on your mind, you're probably going to end up leaving with interest in other areas. You want to stay in the know and stay on the cutting edge. This is the place to do it. Anyone that has a passion for creative things, photography, design, they attend Photoshop World. Hey everybody, Mark Heaps here at Life by Pixels and I'm excited to be doing my first course at Kelby One and we're going to be looking at tips for workflow, production advocacy, and a little bit of a discussion around business and how to grow your business. What are some different approaches to creating our assets? Are we setting our peers up for success? And are we thinking systematically in the way that we approach our projects? Now we're getting down to some of the nitty gritty details. These are key terms that you absolutely must understand. We looked at the tactical execution in Photoshop. The other part was looking strategically at business, communication, building relationships, and engaging our market so that we can grow our opportunities. Check out my course on kelbyone.com. When I go out to shoot a landscape photograph, my goal, my ultimate goal, is not really just a photo itself. So I don't travel to take photos, I travel to enjoy. I travel to enjoy the journey. When 
I was a child, I was always attracted to nature. Canada especially has no shortage of raw beauty. It always is really impressive to look at a mountain and see that, you know, they are eternal. They've been here for a long time. They are going to be here for a long time. So for me to connect with them in this way, which is photography, is absolutely a dream come true. If I had a few things that I would really want you guys to take away from this class would be understanding composition. Do not click that shutter before you know your composition is good. Understand leading lines, understand patterns, the transition from light to dark. To capture it all, sometimes it's just not possible to do it in one shot. So what I try to do is I try to fix it all in post-processing and that's just something that we cannot get away from. As a landscape photographer, even in the film days, they did the same thing in, in the dark room. So we have to basically take our photos to the next level, take those raw fires, the flat raw fires, and bring it back to life. The most important thing to understand is what you're gonna be doing to those images. Understanding the techniques is not a big deal at all. What's really important is understanding composition and imagery. Once you really understand that, the whole thing becomes really, really easy. My goal is to share as much as I can and show the beauty of Canada to the world. Screaming Deals continue. Welcome back to the Kelby One Screaming Deals. And you can probably guess what the next Screaming Deal is going to be because there's a big coffee cups. Yes, there's a mugging. No, there's a big thing that's on the desk now that wasn't here before. Right in front of Scott. This what is the is one it? that I have. This is the eight. This is the eight D. This is a uh, a Drobo multi bay, and this is so I have two Drobos. I have a at home. I have a small one which is half the size of this, literally, like cut it right in half, that's yeah. kind of what it is. And it holds five drives. Look at this bad boy. It'll hold up to eight drives in there. You just, and, and what's nice is you can buy inexpensive drives online. Right. And you slot them in these slots, they pop right in there, and then it automatically configures itself. It does, you don't have to do anything. It does all, the, it's robotic. It does all its own configuration. And the idea behind Drobos, I don't know if you're, if you're that familiar with them because they are pretty cool. The idea behind them is this. You, you put your images on there like you store like any other drive, right? Um, and then what it does is it, mo it constantly monitors the health of these drives. It, it literally monitors them all. If it, if it sees something go wrong, like, hey, this drive is, is not doing well, it'll turn yellow and it'll say, hey, you need to replace this drive. So interesting. So there's a company that does online cloud. It's a company that I pay. I'm not an ambassador. I pay for their service called Backblaze. B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E. Yeah, yeah, I've heard you talk about that. <clears throat> yeah. So um, they buy thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of drives every year. They have to constantly buy new drives. Do you know that 13% of the drives that they buy die within the first year? I don't, I don't doubt it. 13%. That means out of 100 people, 13 people's hard drive, their archives died, all right? Within five to six years, 50% of the drives oh, are yeah. dead. So what this does is something very important. It constantly monitors them. And if it sees something going bad on one of your drives, it is programmed to move it off that drive Automatically, without, without you going, uh-oh, it'll just reconfigure, move your stuff to one of the other drives so you can replace that drive. And so it <clears> blinks <throat> yellow then, and when a drive goes bad, it blinks red, but all your stuff is still safe. Yeah, it'll, it'll tell you exactly what's going on, but it's constantly monitoring your health. They've got an offer, uh, they're, they're doing 75 off the 8D and the B81, or the B810, I guess, N. Uh, they have $50 off the 5C, the 5D3, and the 5N2. I've got an 8D and I have a 5D3. So they're giving us a pretty, pretty good offer off on these. And, um, and then once, once they're up and running, man, they're also, um, they're also silent. Like, one of the reasons why I wanted to switch to Drobo is it's so quiet. Like, so I have my Drobo, I have a small rec recording studio in my home. Yeah. And all day long I'm listening to this array of drives going, uh -huh. And my Drobo sounds like this.
That's such a huge difference. It's like silent and it's connected and it's, it's live. It's not like, you know, I have to go turn it on, I leave it on running all the time. So if I'm on the road, I can access and stuff. But anyway, yeah. um, so uh, this is it. This is the bad boy right here. This is the 8D, so. The Drobo deal, I think, is only available to um, Kelby One members. Yes, if you're a Kelby One Pro member, then you can get one of these bad boys. And if you're not a Kelby One member, today's the best day to join until Cyber, because and it won't be any better on Cyber, it'll just be the same. Uh, this is our best deal ever. Um, it doesn't go any lower than this, 149 to join the Kelby One Pro plan. That's the pro plan where you get everything. You get all the 800 plus classes, you get the community and the help desks and the discounts and the magazines and everything. It's like, it's like our pro plan is the best plan we and have. And screaming deals. Screaming. Today only. Seriously. You're so Listen enthusiastic. I love that. Screaming deals. All right. All right, now, um, we have we have this spreadsheet we've been working from all day, so. Spreadsheet. See, this, this is what we've been dealing with all day long. Spreadsheet. And uh, so we were um, making some slight adjustments and we actually have a surprise coming up, but, but not, not, but not exactly, yet. Not exactly We have a surprise, yet. but not now. No, that was kind of a surprise Here. to me. Hey, surprise, there's a $50 off on joining Kelby One, which is quite a bit. So join today for 149. You will super, super love it. You will mega love it. You know when we were when we were doing this planning meeting last week, and I was talking with Christina and and the gang and Jason and and Juan and um, it's, one of the things that came up was you know what are we going to do and how's the how's the time flow going to be mm -hmm. and it, we're having these Photoshop World instructors talk about what they're teaching at Photoshop World and. They're giving tips and tricks and things like that. Yep. And I said, w what if we have a time where something doesn't work exactly like it's supposed to according to plan? Yeah. And they said, that never happens. But, <laughs> but I said, just in case, what if that happens? And they said, what we're going to do is um, you can do some tips and tricks from one of your classes. So I'm going to do that right after we talk about the Tether Tools offer. So there's a Tether Tools offer. Well, what's Tether Tools? What do they do? Tether Tools does tools for tethering. Tethering. Yes. That's what I was doing in my live shoot earlier right. today. That was I was tethered uh, using, uh, in fact, everything that you saw attached to my computer was from Tether Tools. So, I am not a Tether Tools ambassador. I just love their stuff. So Tether Tools makes all kinds of things. And it used to be just a few things. And now it's just, it's everything from straps and mounts and just battery mounts and clips and clamps. Just tons of stuff to get... Um, to improve the way that your camera <laughs> and your computer talk to one another. There are things like cables, there's all kinds of stuff. So there is a Tether Tools offer, and that's 50% off. Rapid Mount Lights and Action Kit includes an extra free 30-pack of Rapid Strips, and I think those are the ones for your breath. The no, the <laughs> that's close. Those are crest white strips. Oh, okay. Okay. No. So what they what they've done is they've come up with with a mounting system where you can basically put a flash or even like a GoPro or something yeah. just about anywhere, and those strips actually let you mount it to different stuff on the back. But if you want to put a flash like anywhere, if you want to put it inside of a car or anywhere, you see that that's to, just to the right of him with a little orange bracket around it, like yeah. it's orange with bungee cape, right. that's it. It is a, I can put my flash anywhere. So if you want to do really cool stuff with your flash, like putting it up on a window and mounting it there and putting a gel on it and all. Now, you're probably thinking, why would you mount a flash on a window? <laughs> that's just what I was thinking. I'm thinking you're probably thinking it too. <laughs> There's a window there, but you're putting a flash on it. All right, this is more likely, I want to put a flash in a place where you normally you couldn't put a flash. Yeah. Like you could put it in like, you know, like in your car or in the back seat or, you know, I mean, there's a million places that you want to put a flash and you want it to be stuck up there quick and you want it to come off easily. Those strips are really, really, that's what he's that's talking cool. about right there. So, no, they're honestly really, really great. They're, you want to bounce something off a wall or put it in some place where a flash shouldn't go. It is a, a perfect, just sticks on there, pop your flash in there, away it goes. So that's what the deal is on, is on that kit. Now they have a whole kit that allows you to mount either GoPro or, I mean, it's a whole little kit. So that's the, what their deal is on. So that's the Tether Tools discount. By the way, here is the cable I was using earlier uh, in the studio. 
So that's, this is the company that makes this stuff. They make all these. And people ask me, well, how will I know if I buy the right one? When you go to their website, you go, I have this camera and I have this model, and it goes, oh, you need this, you know, it'll tell you Yeah, exactly. and there's also special um, attachment uh, aids to make sure that the cable stays plugged into your... Yeah, it's called a jerk stopper. It basically makes sure you don't jerk it out of the yeah. camera. Uh, they also sell the table my laptop was on. They yeah. sell the bar that I put my camera and my laptop on. They've got a drink holder. <laughs> I kid you not, it's the coolest thing. It slides out from under your tray. You can put a drink on the set so you don't spill it on anything, like your, <laughs> like your laptop or your camera. Uh, they've got a, a little thing that goes under the tray to hold your hard drive. Uh, yeah. In my case today, we were holding my power pack for my laptop. So yeah, lots of great stuff. Great people. Uh, I'm not their ambassador or anything, but I met them. So this is a weird story. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I've heard I of was it. doing a car, an automotive shoot in a studio. In, this, in the middle of nowhere, in this uh, industrial center, and there was a photography studio. They were three doors down, and they came down to my shoot, and I met them in person, and we've been friends ever since. That's so anyway, cool. they have great people, great stuff, so really glad that they made this uh, offer available to us. Now, speaking of really great people and really great stuff, one of my favorite people in the world is on the line, oh, and thanks. it's not you, Larry. You are one of my favorite people, but... <coughs> This, this person is not only a favorite person, but he is uh, 21 years with Adobe, and we are honored that at the very first Photoshop, 22 years, at the very first Photoshop world in 1999, he was the keynote speaker, and we are honored that for the 20th anniversary of Photoshop world, Terry is our keynote speaker in that Orlando. That is really Isn't cool. Isn't that great? We're honored to have Welcome aboard, Terry. You know, it, it took timing to get that just right. To be the keynote speaker again. 20 years apart. 20 that is so apart. cool. <laughs> well, Terry, we are honored to have you there. We're honored to have you here uh, with us. Uh, Terry has a number of classes uh, with Kelby One, and I'm talking to Terry today about uh, another class that, that, we, that we'll hopefully be yeah. shooting soon here in our headquarters. Uh, Terry, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here and glad to talk once again to the Kelby One members or potential members. Hey, do you, do you have anything exciting planned for the keynote, like showing unreleased technology that you're sworn not I, to show? I do have, I, well, I'm sworn not to talk about it. I will be showing it, though. <laughs> <laughs> New well, things to show. Well, that's cool. That is really great, Terry. And um, so, Terry, I, you know, when people hear that you're an evangelist, an Adobe evangelist, I, I, I sometimes think that you're just like an ambassador like you like, you know, you just really love their stuff and you promote nope. it, but you're an Adobe employee and have been for 22 years. 22 years, employee 2,200 something. Wow. Of you're... now, 12, I don't know, 20,000 people. I don't know, wow. something, something crazy. Now you're also a really great photographer. Uh, you do portraits, you do landscapes. Uh, you do a lot in stock. You have a very wide I variety do. of things that you do. Uh, you do automotive photography you're getting into now? Uh, just playing. So no, mostly portrait, portraits and travel. I know, but you don't play at anything. Uh, you will you watch, Terry will be, be smoking here. He'll all of a sudden have a portfolio of, of automotive photography. You're also a drone photographer? I am. I dabble. You dabble. <laughs> I do. I dabble. And you're a tech. I, I, I take drones when I travel, so that falls into the travel photography. You are a tech wizard, though. You're a super tech guy. He's a Tesla enthusiast. You're a Tesla enthusiast. I am. And there's there's all kinds of facets. So what are you teaching this year? But you're doing the keynote. But what else are you teaching? You're teaching quite a lot this I've year. Got, yeah, I've got a Lightroom, my first ever Photoshop World Precon. So I'm doing a crash course on Lightroom for four hours. Get all the Lightroom I can possibly give you in four hours. Oh man. So that's that's the day before Photoshop World, and then or the day before the main uh, day of Photoshop World, and then I've got. Uh, Lightroom classes, I've got, I think, a portfolio class on Adobe Portfolio, and I've got other stuff that's on the website that I, I need to go look at. I wrote workbooks, but <laughs> I forgot all <laughs> I, I, I get you. Once my workbook's done, I try not to think yeah, about it's it like, again. Yeah, it's like I, I did the workbooks for them. I'd have to remember what they are, but they're on the website. You'll see them. All right. Well, that, that is awesome. And um, so uh, are you in your studio there? I am in my virtual studio. I'm in one of my studios. I'm in my live streaming studio. Wow. You've got a lot of studios. I do. I have a couple. 
<laughs> you gotta be careful. Anyway, so uh, that's I, cool. I have, a, I have a tip, I think, for you as Ooh. well. Oh, you got a tip? What do you got? Yeah, so I have a Lightroom tip, and I, I think, Scott, it's going to be a first for you. I don't think you've ever talked about this or shown this. Oh. So for the first time ever, I get to show you something that I don't think you've thought of yet. I, I love like this. this. I love learning new stuff. And it, this is like, what you know, everything I everything I usually show is, oh, Scott already did that three weeks ago. Scott did that last week. <laughs> like, I have to think of something new. And Great. I so, did. Terry, so now I can say, Scott will do this next week. <laughs> Exactly. That's that's the way it works. We, we bounce back and forth, but it's usually right. more bouncing this way than your way. So, All right. Let's. What do you got? All right. All right. Switch over uh, here. Go to the computer. So, um, and Scott, I saw you doing this today with your live shoot. And you have uh, you have the beauty dish overhead. You have the light behind you or behind her. And uh, fortunately, she was not wearing glasses, so it worked perfectly. <laughs> but in this case. <laughs> She's wearing glasses, and people are always saying, how do you get the glare out of the glasses? And there is no magic for that. But in this case, it's not just glare. It's the reflector. Actually, it's a Westcott highlighter. No, I'm not a Westcott ambassador. But it's a Westcott <laughs> highlighter uh, bouncing up into the glasses. And I was thinking, wow, this, this shot would be so much cooler if there wasn't so much white glare from that reflector popping into the glasses. And I think I have a way to kind of reduce it. It won't get rid of it completely, but it will certainly take it down a notch. So you can do this in Photoshop. You can do this uh, easily in Lightroom. Uh, you can even do it in Lightroom CC. It's a selective adjustment. I'm going to head over to the adjustment brush, which I, already, I was already in. And the adjustment brush, first and foremost, if you're spending time going through the sliders, like to, to first before you start, you're kind of wasting a little bit of time there because the adjustment brush has all these great presets at the top here that are built in. So I know I want to do a dehaze. So if I go to dehaze, it's a preset that zeroes out everything else and just goes straight to dehaze. Huh. Great. So now what I'm going to do, and that's not the tip. Well, the tip is I uh, take the, uh, take my brush, make it a fairly large brush. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom part of her eye and just brush really hard there. So I, I'm using a Wacom, which I'm not an ambassador for either. And <laughs> I, um, uh, I'm just painting, just getting that white part underneath her eye there. So now that I've dialed that in, now that I've got it painted, I can go ahead and dial that in just by adding a little more dehaze to kind of take out some of that glare. Oh. oh. Hang on, I am not getting what I want here, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay, I wasn't seeing it at first. So you can see when I add it back in, we can see when I take it out now. Yeah. And if oh, I yeah. hold down my option key here, oh, I can see I didn't paint enough. That's my problem. So let me go ahead and paint some more of that in there. I was like, it should be doing more than it was doing. And because I wasn't pressing hard enough with my stylus, I wasn't taking it out enough. Okay, so now let's try that again. And we'll make sure that we got it this time. Hold down the option key. Yeah, so you see when I hold down the option or alt key and hover over the point, you can see the red mask of where I paint it. So that way you can see if you missed any spots. You can still see I missed a little bit down, oops, missed a little bit down here. And then once I've got that painted in, dialed in, then I can of course adjust it with the uh, dehaze slider. So this was without it. And now we can just go ahead and just take out some of that glare. Oh yeah. Just by cranking up the dehaze. That's too much. That's too much, so somewhere right in there. Now, of course, while you've got that in there, you can, of course, do other things. So if you if you felt the exposure maybe could come down a bit, that probably wouldn't be a good idea, but you could do that here. You can take down the whites in that area, too, to kind of bring that down. But you're gonna if you go too far with any of these, you're going to run the risk of making the bottoms of our eyes too dark. So you got to use this sparingly, but it will take out some of that glare. So just another use for the selective adjustment brush and using it with a preset like dehaze to zero everything else out and then just add that amount that you want back in there. Um, now, if you felt that that still wasn't enough, keep in mind that you can always go in and add a new point. So you can add a new one and say, hey, I would like to add some more dehaze, maybe in this area, just at the very bottom, 
down here. And then again, I'm probably doing too much in this case, but you, you added another point that you can dehaze even further. So whenever you do something and 100 is not enough, you can always add another point and add some more in if you need to. So you're just doubling up on it. But again, use it sparingly because we don't want to get rid of that raccoon look where the eyes get a little too dark. <laughs> Let's just take it down a little bit more. So there you go. So if we um, were to go in and we were to do a get out of the brush, there we go. Oop, I always do the wrong key there. Sorry, my bad. Let's go back to it. There we go. Before and after. So that's before and that's after. Oh, so yeah. Just that white out just enough to dial it down a bit. Okay, you're right. I did not know that. I never thought to use, but I'm going to now. Thank you, Terry. No Terry, I have a question. How did sure. you get such a large version of Lightroom? Because such a large version? Yeah, because you yeah, know, he was tiny down you there. You were in the tiny corner. in the corner and your Lightroom is giant. Yeah. That was uh, huge. Does he have like a big monitor behind him? Is it like a really big monitor, Terry? Like Or does Terry get it, small? It 400 it, inches? Terry gets very small. It's, it's, it's like a really big monitor. I like doing that. Wow, well. you tilted it to the Does it take up more room in your house when you tilt tilt that? <laughs> Well, I got like two two big burly guys just like turning it back oh. and forth. When I <laughs> wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Terry. Uh, I, I sure do appreciate you taking the time. We're, we're honored to have you at Photoshop World again for the 20th anniversary doing the keynote. And yeah, it'll be uh, my pleasure. And I'll be right there to I'm try looking to. Forward to seeing, looking forward to seeing everybody in Orlando and Vegas. We get to go back to Vegas again this year as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, I only do maybe three conferences a year, maybe four, and Photoshop World is definitely on the top of my list of being one of my favorites. Well, so with that said, it'll be a pleasure to see you guys once again. Same here, man. Well, thank you, Terry. Right. Take care, buddy. Thanks for joining us, Terry. Thanks. Take care. Have a great one. Okay, who is he again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Terry, well, is that the was, best. Terry is the best. And you know what? I, I, I love to listen to him teach. He teaches you. You always feel like it's a friend showing you something. You know? One of it's my like... favorite things, I saw him out at Adobe <clears throat> Max years and years and years ago. And I'm sitting in one of Terry's classes. And he starts off his class. And he says, uh, now in this class, I'm going to be, you know, he just does a setup. And he says, now, uh, periodically, I will uh, tell jokes. You're allowed to laugh during the class. And if you ever hear me pause during the class and there is no laughter it's just because you didn't get the joke <laughs> now what was so awesome about that setup was two minutes into the class three minutes into the class he told this joke that was kind of like eh, it wasn't that funny yeah. and he goes see <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love terry yeah, perfect all right well guys we have we are it's not like we've come to the end it's like we've run over by 28 minutes which is typical for us yes but uh just want to don't forget uh, 50% off the class, Shoot for More Money by Larry Becker. Yeah. So that is, uh, if you are a uh, Kelby One member, you can claim it in the discounts page, kelbyone.com slash discounts. If you're not a Kelby One member. What are you thinking? Yeah, it's your best deal of the year, 149 It doesn't get any better than that. It never is any lower than that. That yeah. is as low as it gets. So we would love to have you as a member. You will love it. You'll have a great time and you'll get lots of help. And you're going to be joining a worldwide community of photographers and designers and creative people that are awesome. Uh, you'll, have, you'll be able to get classes from me and from Larry Becker. You know, I'm teaching two classes at Photoshop World yes, this year. I'm teaching um, in the theater <clears throat> 10 tips and tricks every photographer should know about their camera. There's so many different things, little buttons and bells and whistles that people don't know about. So I'm going to teach a couple of those things. You said you had a tip. Yeah, I have I have a list just in case. But we we had a, a bonus trainer in today that so I don't need to do any of those tips. You can't do one tip. <clears throat> I can do I can do one. Do a short one because we're out of time. Okay, but but then I also wanted to talk about I, I am teaching one other class which is the video profit zone for photographers. Oh. So I'm actually teaching photographers. You guys are really into the photography, and we all know that if we just flip one little switch, our still camera becomes a video camera. But there, there's a problem that many of the trainers that are out there teaching video think everybody wants to be an indie filmmaker or uh, you know go into movies and that kind of thing. And so I found this niche right in between. So when I'm not here doing the Screaming Deals Day, um, and I'm in my town in Central Florida, I do these 
video projects that are more than most photographers do and less than most video companies do. Gotcha. And so that's what I'm teaching as a class at Photoshop World, and that's also what my giveaway is. I've got the whole thing into a two hour and 46 minute video class that I never put on sale for half price, only for Screaming Deal. Well, thank you for doing that, Larry. Yeah, glad to do that. All right, we're wrapping up with Larry's tip. He's got a quick tip. Yes. He's looking at his list and going, Yeah, I'm looking at the list. Which one, which one, which one? Uh, okay, so we talked a little bit about flash. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do the flash tip. Okay, so most people know that most cameras have exposure compensation. And so let's say you're in uh, program mode where you're letting the camera pick a number of the settings and make some intelligent guesses. And you, you look at it after a couple shots and you kind of go, yeah, that's not quite bright enough. And so you use exposure compensation and you boost that a little bit. What a lot of people don't know is that your camera can control the flash and cause or and do flash exposure compensation. So people that are learning flash want to use TTL or ETTL right. so that the camera does the metering and does the guessing on how bright the image should be. And yes, while a flash is being used with your camera, either on camera or off camera, your flash, um, your exposure can be adjusted. You can boost or, or reduce the exposure with exposure compensation, but you can also do it with the flash. So let's say you want to control just the flash. It's on TTL mode. You've got all your exposure settings just right, but you can actually go into settings in your camera and say, you know what, flash, flash just a little brighter. All the rest of the ambient light in the scene is just the way I want it, but I want the flash exposure to be just a little bit more. So flash exposure compensation is one of bunches of things you don't know or may not know that your camera can do, and that's what my class in the Kelby One Theater is going to be, is a whole bunch of those little tips and tricks that people oh, don't know Oh, that's a good about. one, because, you know, your flash is sometimes wrong. Yes. And I think that when you look at the thing and you go, wow, TTL read the scene, everything looks okay, but my flash is too bright or too dark, you can override that and say, I know that's what you think is right. Right. I disagree. Or I want the flash to be more subtle. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. I would go on the subtle because I'm, I'm a subtle guy. Anyway, thank you, Larry. <laughs> thank you for that tip. Uh, thanks to all of our crew here. Thanks to Juan and Eric and the guys in the booth, Jason and Ron and Christina and Victor and everybody that helped to put this together today. And thanks to all of our instructors that tuned in. And thanks to you guys for watching and hanging out with us today. We've had an awful lot of fun here on Kelby One Day. Tell your friends about this. Uh, if they want to become a, a pro member, it's only today. It is over today. So $149, if you go to kelbyone.com slash kelbyoneday, you can become a pro member today at the lowest price of the year. The lowest price that I've ever seen it, $149, and it's just for today. So thank you guys. Thank you, Larry. Glad it to be was here. A pleasure having you here. Thank you for the awesome deal that you're giving us on that video. Boy, I know so many people that could use that. Take care, everybody, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. See ya.